All eyes are on one man charging up the leaderboard in the race for the Poker Go Cup. Who is that man that finished seventh in event one? Who is the man that came into event four as the final table chip leader and finished runner up? And who is the man coming in as back to back final table chip leader? Anthony, who is the man? And tonight, who is the boss? Welcome back to Las Vegas, the PokerGo studio to be exact. We are back for another epic final table of the 2023 PokerGo Cup. Event number five, a 15K buy-in as we continue to raise the stakes here in Las Vegas. Thanks all so much to everyone joining us here on YouTube. My name is Rem Karinkama. Donnie Peters alongside me as always. And if you want the real professionals, head on over to PokerGo.com as Jeff Plant and Brent Hanks are on the call for what might be an epic showdown between some legends of the game, including someone at his third final table of the series, Anthony Hu, looking to take a commanding lead in the race for the PokerGo Cup and the 50K cash bonus. However, one man is surely gonna be hot on his heels. Jeremy Osmus defending PokerGo Cup champion in the hunt for some really serious points here with a few events still left to go. And the same can be said for Aram Zobian, First place in event number two puts him in prime position to contend for the cup. We have a lot of big names at this final table, including the unluckiest man in the building the last few days, Eric Seidel. Yesterday was the one who basically had the most brutal bad beat, losing with Queens to Queen, Jack of Hearts versus Justin Saliba, who went on to win yesterday's event. Eric Seidel is back with 23 big blinds, looking to perhaps do a little better than what he did yesterday. Here's a look at the race for the Cup. Ed Sebesta also cashed in this event. He is our current leader. The 78-year-old retiree from Texas could take the Cup down and will surely try to get some more points in today's 25K event, which you can follow on PGT.com. Live reporting underway right now. Diving straight into the action. Eric Seidel picks up 10-9 suited, and we are off to the races. Donnie Peters, Brian Kim here in the mix as well. Dylan Stefano, and then I've mentioned all the players we got another stacked final table. Oh, yeah. Can't wait to see this one play out. A little bit of a bigger buy-in with that 15K. Aram Zobian here with Pocky Kings. He brought the hat back out. The beard is shaped up nicely. I wouldn't say. Yeah, we're missing, we're mi we're missing the. Seems like it's always when you don't have any <laughs> We're missing the beard when you're young. of Andrew Moreno, yeah. but we have like Aram Zobian back to represent the beards in poker. I feel like, a, I feel like yeah, Jeremy Osmus could grow a beard. Oh, like a mean one. No. Jeremy Osmus could do anything, <laughs> as, you will, as you will hear later in the show, I'm sure. Um, meanwhile, Eric Seidel continues where he left off yesterday. He's getting into pretty rough situations here. You're good. Yeah, I was good. Zobin with the three bet. Seidel sitting on a 23 big blind stack, Donnie. Yeah, yeah. Really, really brutal that. spot. I, I like it too. I play a little bit. I just self caught the so no. <laughs> disciplined with the lay down there. By the way, if you're just tuning in on YouTube, please let us know in the chat where you're watching from, what the weather is, what are you drinking, what are you eating. We'd love to get to know everyone at home a little bit better. And here's a look at the series summary. Kerry Katz, Adrian Mateos, and Anthony Hu all have three caches. Who back-to-back -back final table chip leader. And Ed Sebesta, like I said, he is the current leader in the race for the Cup. And the married couple, Kristen and Alex Foxen, in the top ten of the overall Cup standing. So it's going to be a hot battle with a few days left to be played. We've got two 25Ks and a 50K still on tap here on <coughs> our YouTube stream. But today, of course, this 15K is, uh, is yet to be contested for the win. Here we go. We've got Kyle in the house. Liverpool lashing with rain. Oh, better off watching poker than being outside in the rain. We've got DC in the house. Nick says weather sucks. Gabriel watching from Houston, Texas. Thanks so much for tuning in. How was the weather this morning? You you got to go for a ride. I uh, I Did rode you get for blowing off the road. I rode for 90 minutes into a battering headwind, and then I turned around and then I was home in five minutes. Make sure you follow this guy on Strava. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a look at the final table payouts: 268k up top, meaning there's also more yeah, points up for up grabs up now that the buy-in has gone up. Again. Donnie, um, a lot of implications depending on today's too, finishing positions. Really, really it good. feels as though everyone is in the mix, perhaps with the yeah, exception yeah, of the Stefano and Brian Kim. After, uh, yeah, but they could still make some moves. You know, yeah. of course, 
them being a little bit lower on the leaderboard coming in, it's going to result or going to rely on where the other players finish. But a win for Di Stefano and a win for Kim will put them uh, on 335 points and 350 points respectively, which is more than anyone else has currently. So, you know, if they're able to go like a one-two combination, that would limit the points that these other players make and move them up the leaderboard quite a bit. Uh, both Anthony Hu and Aram Zobian can eclipse the 500 point mark if they go on to win. So there's a lot of implications at play here. 15K buy-in level, a little bit of a wonky one. You don't see it all the time, but as you mentioned, it does allow for more points because it still sticks in that that tier of the one-to-one -one, you know, point per dollar ratio. Oh, here we go with some nice beats to look at. Jeremy Osmus, awesome sauce. The last five years have been amazing. Of course, 2020 was kind of a wash, but there we have 2.8, 2.2, 1.9, .2, million, and $1 million over the last five years, up to $13.2 in earnings. I can only imagine how much more he's going to add to that in the next few years. Steven Rogers asked in the chat, what do the points do? There is a series leaderboard um, through this eight-event Poker Go Cup. The person who finishes on top of the leaderboard when it's all said and done wins the Poker Girl Cup and wins the $50,000 championship bonus. Not too shabby. Looking at our chat here, Germany, negative one Celsius eating burgers. This doesn't sound too bad, actually. Love, me, love myself a burger. We have Jeffrey in the house watching from Heredia, Costa Rica. Never heard of it, but it sounds warmer than most places in the chat right now. We've got Oklahoma in the house. Chester watching from Texas. Romania, Long Island, Michigan. Leeds, negative four Celsius. Oh, brutal. Eric Seidel, of course. Legend of the game, nine WSB bracelets. Entered the Hall of Fame in 2010. And it's currently sixth on poker's all-time money list. If you're watching us on YouTube, please know that when we hit 500 likes, we're going to give away a free annual subscription to Poker Go. That's an offer that stands every single day. And uh, if we get enough likes, we might extend the show a little bit today. But we're undecided as of right now. But uh, please engage with us. Send us your questions in the chat. Like the video. And uh, we'll try to make a fun show out of it. I think we have three 20-somethings at this final table. Oh, wow. Dylan DiStefano, Anthony Hu, and I believe Aram Zobian as well. So... You don't see too many 20-year-olds these days, but uh, these guys are certainly coming up the ranks pretty fast. Back in the day when Steve Bilaracus broke the record of <laughs> youngest World Series Book of Bracelet winner ever in the 5K No Limit Hold'em Limit Hold'em Mix Max back in 07, I felt like every final table had at least three people on there that were under the age of 25. <coughs> Definitely a different era in the game of poker. Son Goku says this is live from Vegas. How's the weather there? The weather is terrible in Vegas. It's been extremely windy and rainy, and it's not looking like it's going to change anytime soon. It's going to be, it's going to be a welcome sight when we hit triple digits again, somewhere <laughs> in uh, in May or something. I was feeling Vegas that period, the period of sort of nice calm weather is too short. Whether it's the fall or the spring. All of a sudden, we go from 50 degrees and windy to 90 degrees and sunny. Brian Kim, by the way, Donnie, you know him very well. Um, had a bit of a breakout in the main event for the general poker audience. Of course, he's been in the game for a very long time. And here he comes with a shove. Jack Town offsuit moves all in for his final 11 big blinds from the cutoff. Only has to beat a few players, but Anthony Hu picks up a real hand. And what I was going to say, Brian Kim became famous for a hand that <laughs> might haunt him for a long time, Donnie. Yeah, I, I got some uh, some close friends that get in these hands that just uh, <laughs> they become kind of torturous to look back on. Obviously, the, the Brian Kim versus Bill Klein hand when he got bluffed pretty hard. Um, good friends with Ronnie Varda. Of course, we know what happened with him and Miss Finland. So, yeah. If you stay friends with me long enough, Rem Coach, it's, it's just kind of a matter of time before you look like an idiot on a live stream. Well, if that means that I'm deep in the main event, I, I'll <laughs> take it. I'll take it. <coughs> Brian Kim, uh, high stakes cash game pro. Might have seen him on Live at the Bike, Hustler Casino hey, some Live, some of that sort of stuff, but he's really gotten bit Jeez. by the tournament bug lately. I'd say that. 
Huh? How'd you do that? He's asking. No, no, I was you. guessing his. Oh, his ass. <laughs> Brian Kim studied at UNLV. Lives in Sydney, Australia. That means I was really it's summer in Australia, yet he chooses to be here. He has one guy's hand, and that's what the other guy. Yeah, the seven. said seven. And then you won, so you really liked it. <laughs> He said study he psychology at UNLV. He's also, also played hockey class. at UNLV, quite the hockey yeah. player. He did call it yesterday. He said was drafted, play. I think is the Can number one overall on. pick in one of the minor hockey leagues in, down in Australia. So. Wow. And he still plays? I don't know if he plays anymore. He plays a ton of tennis right now. Speaking of hockey, De Stefano has a Habs jersey draped over his shoulders by the looks of it. Yeah, he was he was saying yesterday yeah. that every time he wears a hockey jersey in a poker tournament, his ROI is like <laughs> way higher or something. So has to keep it on again today. And then DeStefano and Kim actually play a bit of high stakes cash together over at Bellagio. So probably pretty familiar with one another in that regard. Well, how long is the delay on it? Exciting flop here for Zobian who calls a race from the big blind and just flops two pair with the backdoor flush draw who with the betting lead might decide to continue here. It's extra exciting when you get to flop top two against a player like who, who as we saw yesterday, is certainly not gonna be shy putting chips in the pot. I think his VPIP early on was pushing 70%. He was certainly active throughout the final table. He got, uh, he got really aggressive yesterday on the bubble in this event. Should make for a fun day. Deuce on the turn. Pairs the board, adds a flush draw. Neither player has any of that, but this does improve whose chances of beating Zobian. Jack or Ace would be enough now. Not the greatest card for Zobian. And obviously if who has an overpair, he makes a better two pair. That card can also cause who to shut down. My instinct right now says Zobian fire big here on the river. Branson in the chat says, went to Vegas on October my 21st birth birthday and I loved it. Branson, where'd you go in Vegas? Give us some details. Or do you not remember any of it? Which is also a possibility. Here it comes. 205. Was I right? Is that big? Oh yeah, that's, I mean, that's definitely big. <laughs> For today's poker, <laughs> coming in at what, 80% pot, 85% pot, that's that's a big bet. Jester Flanagan says, was really thinking DePaulo would be making an appearance here. Well, Ryan DePaulo has not been in the studio for as far as I can remember. I do enjoy his vlogs, we had some vlog content with him during the WSOP, which was a lot of fun. Who lets it go? Not a lot of merit there, Donnie. And calling with, with ace high, given the situation? Yeah. I mean, it's also... <coughs> excuse me. I think these two Is recognize each other, and, table? you know, Zobian's tendencies there, he's probably not bluffing. No. no. I, I far had too one often enough. Like 20 years old. Negron and Helmi, the two legends of the game, fell just short of the money. Only eight places got one paid day. in this event. It's televised. Negron showed up. Oh, by the, the way, Donnie, why am I telling the story? You were there. <laughs> Donnie, <laughs> give us the full <laughs> Phil Helmi experience, because you were there on the floor yesterday. And you already texted me about it, it was, and uh, it was quite, I mean, a, it's quite a, a bit of shenanigans. It's, of course, the, the most Phil Helmuth experience that you could expect. Guarantee. Max oh. Late Reg, as you called so yesterday on the stream, you said if Helmuth like does show up, as he tweeted out, <laughs> that it would be a Max <laughs> Late Reg. Of course it is Max Late right? Reg. He doubles up yeah. pretty early on with pocket aces, of course. He just has he the burgers. All of a sudden, um, He ends up doubling up again with pocket aces again through carry cats. Where's Hartland? Where's Hartland? It was in Oklahoma. And then he doubled up with 10s. Uh, you can play when you're 18. So. Uh, and then he got aces yeah. for a third time in like a, in like a <laughs> two hour stretch. And he ultimately busted. He flopped top set too. Um, slow play to just call the race free flop, flop top set. Bill Klein ended up turning a straight and busted him. But he started, he started the tournament with 125K. He did hell me. He doubled up with aces twice, doubled up with tens once, had aces a third time, and like never had more than 200k chips. <laughs> I mean, that, that's the most hell new thing possible. Yes. And then, of course, uh, eight places pay. He busts 15th, you know, just short of the money. And then Negranu, Negranu went nice and deep. 
he ultimately took a bad beat, got it all in with, with Ace King versus Zobian's Ace Queen. Zobian hits the Queen, and that was it for Kit Boker. Here's a look at the walk in from the players in question. Osmus found himself a jacket to wear in this cold <laughs> Vegas wind. The hockey jersey, of course, very warm. Aram Zobian looks like a warm fella, but he brought the scarf. Brian Kim, comfortable, ready for action. Anthony Hu, once again, classy. Oh, he got he got it all zipped up today. Oh yeah, it looks like he's walking the street in New York. It's a short walk, Donnie, from the, from the actual <laughs> from Aria to the to the Boca Boca Studio. Yeah, yeah, but it's chilly outside, man. Not even long enough to get cold, if, uh, if you're asking me. Jerry Osmus was supposed to have a flight today, cancelled it because he made this final table. Wow, so he's sticking around. That's huge. <laughs> And of course, if he gets a lot of points today, he really can't leave. Yeah, you got to try and defend the title, right? Defend the cup. Osmus here opens with a king and a mystery card. Chips at the end there. Is that you? Kim defends queen three of diamonds. I think they might have taken chips out of your stack. Could be a bit of an action oh. flop here. King Maybe jack they, they for Osmus. Like, open oh, ended. This guy's too big of a lead. We we'll probably have to. The top so pair for the King. Oh, like the open your bag. Those people wondering in the chat, how many events are there in total? So today's event number five. We got six, seven, and eight still coming up. Final event is going to be on Friday, a 50k no limit hold'em yeah, exactly. event. Yeah, exactly. That's what, that's what I'm saying. They don't want you to yeah, but crush like, our but dreams and spirits. They want all of us to. For me, like I have yet to make the dream. You know, so like it's fucking like. What's the dream? Um, winning all the money in the Pokemon Go Tour. There it is. Winning all the money in the Pokego Tour. Anthony Hu, put it on wax. He just trying to speak it into existence. Brian Kim here, betting a large portion of his small stack. Raising it up to 125 after a bet of 40K. We could see it go in here, Donnie. Yeah, could see it go in here given the draw that Osmus has, also has backdoor king high flush draw. Kim looking probably just to get this in. Shorter on chips, flopping top pair on a draw heavy board, just try and get the chips in. <laughs> there he goes. Jeremy Osmus moves all in. That's exactly what Brian Kim was looking for. He makes the call right away, and we are in almost a dead coin flip situation here. Osmus with a ton of outs. Even some backdoor outs to uh, make life harder for Brian Kim. Kim, however, is the favorite in this hand. Slightly. Slightly, not, yeah. Not by, not by too much. Turn card. Four of hearts. Now he is a much bigger favorite with one card to come. Osma still has 25%. 11 outs to send Brian Kim to the rail, or otherwise we will continue play six-handed. River card. It is the ten of spades that is exactly what Brian Kim was hoping for. He receives a full double up and narrows the field a little bit aside from Brian, uh, aside from Anthony Hu. The other five players are pretty close together. Osmus is now down to 28 Three big left. blinds. Let's see what we got here. Brian Kim career highlights his first cash dating back to the Detox Boca Tour. Second place finish in 2010. First seven figure live cash. 23rd in the most recent World Series Boca main event. And his biggest career cash, 377K in WT5 Diamond. Overall, one win, 16 caches. That middle one, of course, is six figure score. I was gonna say, I know you're reading off the screen. But yep. <laughs> I just do what I'm told, Donnie. Fix it. Producer just, Aiden, fix it. I just do what I'm told. Fix it. Do we have a Sharpie? <laughs> Imagine if you could cash seven figures for finishing 23rd in the main event. I mean, maybe in 2020, <laughs> 2035. Yeah. Speaking of the World Series Boca main event, Donnie, we're going to hit 10,000 players this year, right? I don't know about 10,000, <laughs> but I'm confident that it will be a new record-setting field beating 2006, 8,663 entries. I'm confident that it will surpass that number. Now, is that past 9,000? Is that past 10,000? I don't exactly know just yet, <clears throat> but I think we're going to have one heck of a WSU main event this year. Seidel finally allowed to win a hand here at the final table. 
How dare he actually win a hand. <laughs> If you're in the chat with us, please know that 500 likes will give you guys all a chance to win a free annual subscription to Poker Go, and that's good timing because we have new episodes airing of High Stakes Poker starting on January 24th, so that's just about a week away. The new season of High Stakes Poker is truly epic. You guys will surely be very entertained. Aaron, thanks for joining us in the chat. He says, just got home from grinding 2-5 in St. Augustine. I think Augustine sounds like a place with lo lots of pretty trees. <laughs> like a warm place. <laughs> Jerry Lou, the buy is 25k as it says in the title and the thumbnail of the video. 15k. 15k? Keeping your sharp dying. But there is a 25k today. There is. It is going on right now. PGT.com if you want to follow along with the live reporting. Let's see who's in there. Pretty, pretty good field to start. Got some... Uh so Maybe. Ike Haxton showed up. Isaac Haxton. Isaac Haxton showed up. Rising from the dead. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't seen him in a very long time. Ed Sebesta well, firing. An hour, right? Meanwhile, Di Stefano limps the small blind. Who raises it up with a seven oh. deuce offsuit? Di Stefano moves all in and hand in cookie jar. Caught. Anthony Who kicks it in the muck. Yeah, we got David Peters, Bill Klein, <laughs> Adrian Mateos. De Stefano looks at who there and gives him a little wink. Jason Kuhn also in the mix, Donnie, as we predicted. Yeah, I heard Jason Kuhn uh, came to collect his winnings from a high stakes duel and popping a 25K. <laughs> Seems like a good thing to do. 850. Yeah. 830. Okay, thank you. All the. So Ed Sebest is out there getting in the mix. Ed's going to win the cup. You know, he wasn't going to stick around for the entire series. I think he originally had a flight out yesterday maybe or today but ultimately the points race has uh, enticed him to stick around and, and really chase that that title they just suck you in well yeah i mean if you're in the running you got to go for it right i mean absolutely I think it's silly to to just punt on that all these events by the way are two-day events they play down to the final table on day one and they come back for the live stream on day two and zobin and Stefano in a potential Flash here, but this is the final decides to throw his ace 10 offsuit into the muck. We just saw some stats from Anthony Hu, who has is yet to win a hand on it. Started at, as the chip leader, is still the chip leader, but has lost 430k along Not the way so far. Yeah. Yesterday he was the chip leader coming in as well to that final table. It seemed like he won every single hand. Until he got to heads up play, and that's when Justin Saliba really turned the tables and everything started to shift in his direction. Very soft, very soft. Into the air would have been the last person I could find that. Not you. He's just not a rail type of guy. That's true. So they're here against your will. Yeah. He told them to go, please, but. For the people wondering in the chat why the delay is longer on Poker Go, it is not. The delay is the same, but maybe the signal is a little bit delayed on Poker Go. Um, but we are doing the same exact feed. If you're a Poker Go subscriber, you get Jeff Platt and Brent Hanks with the professional commentary. If you stick around with us, you get myself, Rem Karinka, hey, and Donnie Peters. Um, the circus uh, act. Yep, and uh, of course, a good reminder here that. Our WSP content and our high-stakes poker man. only available for our valued poker Go subscribers. But we do love to bring you some free content whenever we get a chance. Potential battle of hearts here, Donnie, between Ospis and Zobian. Hearts could make this painful. 338 will not make this painful unless something dramatic happens.
Zobian picks it up without much resistance. And the bottom of the standings almost completely tied. Eric Seidel, Brian Kim, and Jeremy Austin's all sitting on 26 big blinds. Small pot so far at this final table. Let us know who you're rooting for in the chat. I know that I'm rooting for Eric Seidel. I mean, there's no reason for me to be unbiased. I just want to see Mr. Seidel make a deep run, get to heads-up play. But also, the storyline of Anthony Hu really fascinates me, Donnie. Yeah, I mean, he started to make some noise, I would say, probably last year in these high roller events. Had a little bit little bit of success, but, you know, not the greatest. Um, I mean, pat myself on the back. I think I said that he was going to be the next breakout player on the PGT, so hopefully I can further that, that agenda and... Uh, he can continue to make these final tables. You only mention it every day. So. I mean, I, I have to. <laughs> I and mean, if I'm going to be Skip Bayless, like, I need to celebrate my wins as much as possible. That's right. No, but Anthony, who is a very, very good player, as I said mm -hmm. earlier, in his 20s. So one of the really new rising stars. Here goes, si Here goes Seidel fighting back. Versus Anthony Hu, making it 180k. Like I said, Anthony Hu is yet to win a hand at this final table. <laughs> There's the first little frown. Eric Donnie. was in the lab <laughs> last night until <laughs> till 4 a.m. I think he just doesn't like Anthony's face or something. <laughs> he just keeps through that. Well, Eric was at that final table yesterday, and if he watched any of it, he would have seen that Hu was opening pretty much every hand <laughs> yep. with anything. Exactly. <laughs> Anthony Hu really punishing the short stacks on yesterday's final table. Here's a look at that PGT Cup. That's up for grabs for the Pokego Cup winner. 720. Yoni Stefano with a little bit of eye contact there. Punching through the third wall. For, what, fourth wall or third wall? Don't fourth, I think it's fourth wall. Eric Seidel, meanwhile, he's the fan favorite in the chat. Sajiro says, who should have won it yesterday? Yeah, he had, he had some opportunities, but Justin Saliba was, uh, could not be deterred. No, it was just Justin Saliba's day. I mean, he won the the Queen Jack of Hearts all in against Eric Seidel's Queens. Went runner runner to a Broadway straight. That was really the the, the most devastating blow to, to Eric. It didn't take all of his chips, but only left him with <laughs> you know 95% of a big blind. And then he busted after that. Chester Flanagan says, "I'm rooting for the Amish fireman salesman." Okay. That can only be one player. It, it can only be one player. Has to be Zobian. Zobian here with the race to 65k. Action on Brian Kim in the big blind with a attractive looking A6 yeah. suited. Could see a jam here. He's got a good stack all to in. do it. And there it all is. In. He does move all in. Quick fold from Zobian. And so far, what we've seen here is a lot of raising and three betting, whether it's a shove or a regular raise. And just a whole bunch of folding. So these players are just feeling each other out, and we're just waiting for some big hands to clash. Once again, a reminder. Here's the here's the the fourth wall break from Dylan Di Stefano. Love to see it. <laughs> the no look fold. The no look fold. That? Yep. <laughs> Very well done. Uh, but yeah, if you're yeah, just tuning in, time? 500 likes to uh, give away a free annual subscription to Poker Go. Nothing will ever top when Greg Morrison blew Pretty the kiss. Hand. Oh yeah, <laughs> that was fun. And the WSB made a that final table. We need more of that. Anthony, who after raising and folding. Half a million chips. Yeah, pretty good yeah. Now finally picks up pocket aces. Let's see if they, if there are some more non-believers here. Pocket Andy says just tuned in. Thanks so much for joining us. Otto says, "Who's the player with the jersey over his back? His name is Dylan Di Stefano." Donnie, what, what can you tell yeah, us about him? Twenty-eight and twenty-four. Mostly a high-stakes cash game reg. Uh, plays a lot of Bellagio, but he does dabble in these higher-stakes tournaments here at the studio. I don't believe we've seen him dive into a 50k yet, but that can of course change depending on any sort of score he has here or where he is in the point stand if he wants to take that shot. I mean, technically all these events are just satellites, Donnie. <laughs> yeah, in a way. Just kind of a ladder system, right? Every time you, uh, you cash, you just take the money and you sign up for the next one. So that's at 15th on Minnesota's all-time money list. I think yeah. the graphic yesterday said like 22nd. Oh, so yeah, so he's, <laughs> he's moving up. He's moving up quick. <laughs> By the end of the Poker Go Cup, he's going to be top three. Who's going to be first <laughs> on the on the on the Minnesota all-time money list? You want to take a guess? 
Is it gonna be some random person like Emerald Slim because he was born in Minnesota? I honestly 1. have 3, no 1. idea. 4. I mean, Minneapolis Jim Meehan would be somebody who I think would okay. be up there, but I don't know how much money he's won total. We can we can sweat it together as I'm gonna scroll up after this hand. Who here with sixes in the big blind, defending versus Zobian, raising with 10-9 suited. Zobian, another player with a lot of cash game experience. Used to grind the old, you know, five, ten games in, you know, within those stakes in Rhode Island and the no Northeast area. Of course, made the WSB main event final table as well a couple of years ago. Wasn't it the year where we had that aces versus aces and kings on the on the final table bubble? I believe so. I think it was the year. One thirty-five. Zobian continues here for 135. Quite a nice flop here for Hu with sixes. Yeah, good flop for Hu and also one of those flops for Zobian where he really just has to bet because he's kind of so far <laughs> removed from that board. The only way he's going to win is by picking this up without going to showdown. Who's going to make the call and make things a little bit harder for himself playing out of position here, but the three on the turn it's probably not going to scare him all that much. Yeah. The lead. Interesting decision here, Donnie. I'm guessing for some protection. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit of protection there. Finally, Anthony, who starts chipping up again after a bit of a rough start. Here's a look at what's coming up: the Global Poker Awards, the fourth annual Global Poker Awards, celebrating the industry, industry's best. Watch it live for free on PokerGo.com, Friday, March 3rd, coming at you from the exact place that we are right now. The only difference is right now wearing a hoodie, <laughs> then I'll be wearing a suit. Should be a fun time. Are you going to win something, Donnie? <coughs> the only thing I want to win is podcast of the year. So, yeah. So if you guys want to help us out, review the Poker Go podcast. There it is. Leave us a review. Go check it out. Donnie Peters and Tim Duckworth do... Uh, do daily shows during the Poker Go Cup. If you want to stay up to date on all the latest from the studio, some inside stories, some behind the scenes knowledge. We do a special segment called the Family Pot. Okay. Where we just kind of give a little family story or you know, a little insight into our lives. Love it. Shove here from who? Gets the job done against Osmus. <coughs> Is it mostly just Tim complaining about his kid? And his wife? It's not always complaining, but it's <laughs> a lot about his kid. Not so much about the wife. I'm more of the complain about my wife guy. <laughs> Anthony Hu from Plymouth, Minnesota. Oh yeah, we're gonna we're, we're gonna live sweat the Minnesota all-time money list. Tony Hartman is. I'm pretty sure I know who's on top because I think someone said it in the chat, so I won't spoil it. I don't even know who Aaron Johnson is. 13th, you know. Sounds like an accountant. Jim Meehan, I know him. Yep. OG. Everett Carlton. Yep. That sounds like a fake name. Jason Sentai, yes, okay, remember there him. You go. Ninth in the year that Duhamel won, I yep. believe. Mike Schneider. Okay. Schneider's poker. Richard Alsup. Yep, that's a, that's a name. Yeah. Raji Warwaz. $2 million in earnings. Who is Raji? Yeah, Waz Waz, yeah. See, I'm like... Always goes by Robbie if you're ever following... You know, some live reporting or whatnot. He's always Robbie Waz Waz or Rob Waz Waz. Won a WSP bracelet in 2022 in a deep stack event. Wow. See, I got I got to keep up on on the on the names here. Ku Vang. Also two million in earnings. I believe he's in the MSPT Hall of Fame. There's so many players. With a lot of these guys are going to be MSPT guys for sure. 
But like, see, two million in earnings, that's really serious. Meanwhile, looking at the all-time money list as we're talking about it, Eric Seidel, sixth, Awesome 68th, and then a massive drop-off to Aram Zobian, who is a former main event <laughs> final tableist and is only in 576th place. That's unbelievable. Uh, all right, a few more to go here on the list. We have Patrick Mahoney. I know that name. One at WPT, I believe. He has tons of caches in the online WSOP. He won the 2016 Rock and Roll Poker Open for 560k, and then also made the final table of the 2018 Five Diamond. All right, a few more here. Number four, Eric Worry. Shout out what? to Eric. Shout out to Eric Worry, who's playing on the upcoming new season of No Gamble No Future. And without spoiling too much, it's really, really funny. <laughs> what happens on No Gamble No Future? You gotta watch it when it comes out. Uh, number three, the legend Halal Berman. Oh yeah. Number two, Ryan Laplante. Okay. Number one, yep. Blake Bond. Yep. By that the end, by the end of this year, Anthony, who will be number one? I'm gonna call it right How now. How far has he gotta go? He only needs about two million. Okay. Two point one. Could make a serious dent here this week. We got Quebec in the house. Love to see it. Some some Spanish fans probably hoping that Adrian Mateos remains near the top of the counts of the overall cup standings. Mateos, of course, briefly took the lead last night, but then Ed Sevesta collected his min cash and jumped right back into the number one spot. Small pod brew in here. We, we picked the right time to steer off to the side here for a bit. Seventy K from Zobian. Seidel makes the call. Seidel in trouble here with Jack Eight versus King Six. Deuce on the river doesn't change a thing. Seidel in a tough spot yet again. Stacks are not too deep. Every single pot has massive implications here. Check check on the flop, so we'll see if Zobian wants to continue to try and target a hand exactly like Seidel has. A jack in it. Making a week or two pair. In this blind battle, having top pair versus middle pair, of course. Very unfortunate spot, but from Zobian's perspective, is is he just straight up hoping for Seidel to have exactly a jack? Is that what he's what he's thinking? Yeah, he's trying to target target hands like jacks. I mean, I don't think he's trying to target a hand like a flush draw because I don't think you're looking to bet and get called there. These players, of course, played together all day yesterday, so there might be some reads that we've picked up on. And there it is, disciplined fold from Eric Seidel, Don. It's not an easy fold to give up a jack there. No, not easy fold to give up a jack, especially when the draws like the queen 10, you know, the straight draws missed, the hearts missed. Could get a little sticky there if you're Eric Seidel, but we've seen him make some disciplined folds so far at this final table. <laughs> That's uh, I think earlier when he <laughs> folded to the 3-bet with the 10-9 of spades, that's an easy one to kind of trap yourself into and want to play because that hand looks so pretty. Yep. So we got away from that. It was also against Zobian when Zobian had two kings. And then here, holding a worse two pair. As we see the chip leader pick up the drawing hand of all drawing hands. Ace king, the best drawing hand in poker. Anthony, who, oh my god. And oh, here Jeremy we go. Osmus picks up one of the best made hands in poker, pocket queens. We got a... We need like a big sort of like alarm bell or like a siren <laughs> that we can hit this button and then all oh the yeah. lights we go off. A, we know a soundboard right here. Yeah, and then it'll be interesting to see how Jeremy plays this because he has such a premium hand that and, and who's been opening so wide. So is he going to just elect a three that kind of smaller? And he does. 150k to go. And we obviously know that who has a very good hand himself. So this is likely going to go in, but. Who's been opening very like wide? Seven, 20 ish. If you're watching us while making lunch, or if you're perhaps running out to the bathroom, 
please come back to your TV right now because we're about to have a big all-in. Oh, yeah. Double check. Make sure he's got the old ace-king. And stick it in. All-in. There it is. All-in from Anthony Hu. Jeremy Austin with the snap call. A fair fight. A real coin flip. Let us know in the chat. Are you enjoying the storyline of Anthony Hu making a run for his first major series title? Or do you want defending champ Jeremy Osmus to stay in the tournament? Series, Let us know in the know, chat sorry, right now. <laughs> <laughs> what did you get yesterday? Third? Second. Second. Oh, pretty good. <laughs> Jeremy Osmus needs to stay alive here to give himself a real chance. Flop comes ace, seven, and nine. Anthony Hu flops a pair of aces. Only two outs left in the deck for Osmus. That's how you're supposed it. to feel when you just win two flips at the very first hand of the final table, right? Turn card. Three Fuck of diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> Never forget. It was, a good, it was a good shove. Alex. Was it? You like it? Yeah. You like it? You like it? <laughs> no, like, like later. Yeah. Uh, Osmus, two yeah, outs. Yeah, yeah. He'll be gone. You. River card. Ace of hearts. Jeremy yeah. Osmus eliminated from the yeah. tournament yeah. in yeah. sixth place. What a shame to see him go. The most beautiful man in poker, <laughs> who can also <laughs> sing a little bit. Mr. Jeremy Ospis, of course, strumming the strings in a recent Twitter video. Pretty sure we're gonna take a look at that. Hey, mighty poker gods, I've got much to confess. If every prayer of mine were answered, I would not live to excess anymore. I'd set the GPI high score. Win gold galore. Oh, give me good cards, please. Like the holy pocket kings, the holy pocket kings. The multi talented Jeremy Ospis. Round of applause um, here. Ladies and gentlemen, Jeremy Ospis, thanks for being on the show. Four. Thanks for singing. Why can this guy do everything, Donnie? I feel I feel so some, some people are just oh my God. blessed with talent. All around. Unbelievable. I feel extremely overwhelmed being he in the presence. He's work on winning his flips though. <laughs> Jeremy Ospis defending Poker Cup champ will still have a chance if he sticks around and plays some more events and this of course must be a painful exit after being near the top of the counts for most of yesterday. By the way, nice house. Got the wine fridge in the back. Yeah, that's the like the underrated stuff of that video. Yeah. He's got like a baby grand piano in the background. He's got custom wine coolers built into the wall. I yeah, mean, unbelievable. How much money has this guy got? I mean, clearly plenty. I sent that video to one of my friends who knows music said that's a very expensive guitar. <laughs> yeah. Like it's just, you know. And also the mic. He's got better better microphone equipment than we have for the podcast. I mean, it's just unbelievable. <laughs> Jeremy Austin should do it all. Maybe he can adopt us or something. Yeah. Jeremy, if you hear this, I will move in with you right away. <laughs> right now, I would. That. Huh? I kind of want to do that. Casio. Special edition, like, metal Casio. It's a lucky watch. I'm wearing a lot of luck today. I'm not going. <laughs> yeah, you're channeling it. Channeling it. Bringing out all the lucky charms. It's a lucky t-shirt. It's a very lucky, very lucky hat. I don't know if you know about the, uh, the Thailand, uh, what do they call it? Horoscope or whatever? There's zodiacs, know. but uh, pink is a very lucky color. Oh, really? Pink, purple, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I, <laughs> I'm sure if you go through a lot of countries, I'm sure you'll find a bunch of different colors. But channeling my Thai energy. Yeah. Wow. Thai energy. Might be the most interesting man in poker. <laughs> the only energy I challenge from Thailand is a pad Thai. <laughs> gives me lots of energy. Tony Stefano, interesting character. I wish there was more table talk like that. That's really funny. No, he was talking about all the superstitions yesterday. <laughs> Mark says, where can I download the complete album? I was talking to Jeremy Austin the other day, and I said, you should do, like, those um, those spoof songs about people. Like, do, like, a Negrano diss song or <laughs> you know, make fun of Doug Polk in some way. 90. Just tuning in. This is the Poco Cup final table of event number five, 15K buy in. Once we hit 500 likes on the video, Can we're going to give away a free annual work. subscription. No break? No break. No, 40 minutes. Okay. Oh, I 
prepaid. Honestly. Prepaid? Yeah. Read the lines? Yeah. Prepay the increase. The Boston Bomber says, is this Di Stefano from Montreal or just wearing that, wearing that ugly jersey because he lost the bet? I'm not entirely sure, but he says it's his lucky jersey, so I'm pretty sure he's uh, grown to be very attached to it. What's up? Keep thinking the 25 stacks are a million. I'm going for oh. The only Stefano is from the USA. Math whiz. Milford, Connecticut, yeah. to be exact. There's a lot of miscounting going on lately around here. I'm sure there's plenty of Habs fans from Connecticut. <laughs> you know, the guy who just put, like, whatever the chip leader stack was on his bag, and they just reported it on Poker News. As, like, the chip leader has, like, five big blinds. <laughs> yeah, it said you were, like, busted out or something, I think. <laughs> it said you, got, you had an ace. It said I was leading the final table while I busted out. <laughs> Strong. the pressure and here. Had a good one. Di Stefano now our short stack with 15 big blinds after laying this one down. <laughs> Who won an important pot yesterday there. when they were down to two tables? Money. Three bet GM doll in oh, with yeah. king six of hearts okay, against Leonard Mao who had pocket jacks and just flopped the king. Yeah, no worries. Flopped actually two pair, king six five, river to full house. You know, it's nice to be Anthony Who. Don't worry about it. Just get it in. Sometimes you have one of those weeks where things just work, things just click. Speaking of clicking, all you guys have to do is click on the like button and subscribe to our channel if you want to give yourself a chance at watching this whole final table for free. We're considering extending it, but we're going to need some more likes. Brian Snyder said, wow, ace-10 folded. Yeah, suited ace-10 of diamonds. Zobian's in that spot where second in chips to who with three shorter stacks still at the table. Likely doesn't want to just blow up in terms of ICM, so he's going to play a little bit more cautiously. Kind of let who just control things, hopefully knock out a player or two, and he can have ladder fun. up some spots. It's nice to have no decision. I'm sure Zobin yeah. is also, you know, thinking of the win. points that are at stake in the Cup Series leaderboard. All right, I've decided on what, what I want to do. You know, the tournament strategy is all in with the worst hand and win. <laughs> Do you want to keep doing that? I mean, yeah, how many times have you got it in with the worst hand? Don't you, don't you want to be ahead Save once for the rest. a while? Yeah, well, the problem is then when you're ahead, you know. Go on. You. <laughs> <laughs> how much is your all-in master class going to be? Um. <laughs> yeah, put that 10 3 in the muck and then tell us. Yeah, so it's this free is in 2021. This is what I'm going to say. I want to add 121 <laughs> new subscribers to our YouTube <laughs> channel. New and coming out. I want to yeah, get 888 more. likes exactly. on the video in the next 12 minutes. And then we'll keep going. And then we'll show you guys the entire final table. The, the entire final table for free. On the purple chips. So 120 new subscribers to our YouTube channel. I'm looking at the live Thanks. count right now. And 888 likes. Call your, call your friends. Call your mom. Call your grandma. Make it work, and we'll do the whole stream for free today. Donnie and I will keep going. We'll even do some more giveaways. Six, uh, Should be 695 for five tuning in. Total, right? 695. Came with a decision here. Yeah, Donnie. Ace five off, getting shoved on from the small blind. Gives it up. What's the what's the cutoff there, Donnie, for, for when you're going to make the call? Hmm. Probably call King and Queens. Probably call Ace Eight. Here's a look at Eric Seidel the last five years. Quite a run. We showed you this graphic yesterday, and it still applies today. Tons of money being added to that career total of 42.2 million. Eric Seidel bound to hit 50 million next year if he keeps this clip up. Very exciting to have Eric Seidel around to play in the big buying events. And uh, he's been a lot more successful than some of his 
some of the guys from his era yeah. you know, at the Coca Cola Cup. Negreanu, of course, came a little after, but Phil Helmuth, man, only showed up once. You think he's going to play today? Is he playing today? I, I really oh, interesting. Your guess is as good as mine, man. I have no idea what he's going to do. I think he might show up late again. Anthony Hu, by the way, moves all in to apply maximum pressure on the players around him. Brian Kim here, down to 17 bigs. Folds ace two suited. I mean, Donnie. We're about to watch. We're about to watch Anthony Hu poker really masterclass. <laughs> like I believe it every time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you don't always see it when you get a Maybe chip leader like this. It. They, so they really might not play as aggressively, but. If, going all if in. what we saw yesterday is any I evidence of what we're going to today, hand every time. Anthony Hu is just going to be pedal to the metal the whole time. You think I'm just and like it's going to be awesome. In there with the yeah, I, think you like, I think you have dog wash. This is I'm how you should play a big stack. Anthony, call, Anthony, Anthony Hu now has 57% of all the chips in play. <laughs> More than half the chips. Jersey's and the other players are all just in, huh? in an ICM jail cell. Yeah, I mean, fully like what are they going to do? Another shot of Buffalo Trace might do it. That too. 100 big blinds for Anthony Hu. <laughs> <laughs> Only 172 big blinds at the table in total. Actually, here on Dolan Stefano, who would be happy to get it in here with King Jack Hearts versus the range of Anthony Hu. All in. See how you like it. Moves all in. <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh, wow. Big hand for Anthony Hu. A7 of diamonds. I think we're going to see a call here. Yeah, yeah. Four. Sahib is asking, where's Nick Shulman? He's playing in today's event, event number six, the 25K buy in. There it is. Anthony Hu makes the call. Red versus red. Big moment here for Dylan Stefano. Big moment as well for the remaining players at this final table. Lots of points up for grabs and a pay jump. This is very fair. Dylan Stefano brought it, brought out all the lucky charms. The hat, the watch, the hockey jersey. But will it <laughs> will it save him here versus chip leader Anthony Hu? Flop comes. Jack in the window. Jack, queen, seven, one heart. With Dr. Flush draws live. I'm in a hand. <laughs> Both Dr. Flush draws <laughs> indeed live. Kind of done. <laughs> Good to see the lighthearted nature. The uh hell? -huh. Turn six of hearts, great card for Dylan Lee Stefano. Who now down to just four outs, black sevens, black aces. River card five of clubs. Dylan Lee Stefano doubles up and chips away at the so massive chip lead still held by Anthony Hu. Can you break one of those down? Pleased to announce we've hit our new subscriber goal for oh, wow. the stream. Look at that. We've Let's not go. we've not hit our like goal yet. 888 likes. If we you can click the sub button, you can click the like button. Well, this is my theory. I think everyone who subbed already liked the video. It's just those people that are in the kitchen peeling peeling potatoes for dinner that yeah. are just too far away from the computer to <laughs> smash like. Well, yes, we will continue if we hit our goal. All right, you got the losing all ends out. Only winning all ends. From here on. I mean, he said it earlier. He, did, he didn't want to get all in with the best hand. Got along with the best hand and lost. <laughs> Di Stefano now second in chips, 28 big blinds, over 1.1 million. Yeah, this really puts pressure on Kim and Seidel now, who fall easy. to the bottom. Easy game. Poker is easy. easy. Thanks to Wesley. <laughs> Gary Muggan says all three accounts subbed and liked. <laughs> That's how we want to see it, Gary. Appreciate it. Just trying to generate some more awareness for all our content. We have some awesome highlights up on the channel. Yeah, the epic hand between Adrian PFC Mateos and, and Alex know, Fox from earlier in the series, like as well you know, as the, you look at the board, amazing run from Ed Sebesta. Action Ed winning that event at age 78. I feel like I knew it. I just won for it in a while. There's no chance that King Jack was going down there. Yeah. <laughs> if, I think if I had King Jack with black, I would have lost, actually. But red against red, I think, I think that's all me. Yesterday, too. King Jack. King Jack, yeah, it was red yesterday. Nice. Here's a look at event number six, the 25K No Limit. I see Nagranu 
I see Nick Petrangelo, Alex Foxen, Sean Winter. What a stacked table there in the corner. Orpen, David Peters also back in the mix. There's Nick Shulman for you. Let's go, Nick. Seth Davies in the middle, Dan Smith on the left. Seth Davies has as the horse. I wonder if it's the same brand as the old man sweater that Seidel wore yesterday. Here's a tweet from Ben Yu from last night. When we first started dating, we would stay up and talk all night, sometimes until 8 a.m., said Chrissy B, 24 poker, a.k.a. Kristen Foxen. Seth Davies responded says, that sounds awful. I'd rather go to prison. I'd rather go to prison. Big statement there from Seth Davies. Back to the action here at the final table. <coughs> I'm dreaming about that egg ham, egg bacon and cheese bagel, Donnie. So good. Do you think that on break there's going to be any left for me? No. <laughs> uh, I think there'll be one left. Oh, that'd be so great. Matteo says, is there a way to watch the D-Next table? Yes, please send him a tweet and say, hey, Daniel Legrano, <laughs> can you please make tomorrow's final table? Because we do stream every final table. We are streaming every day through Friday. Poker Cup. Looks like you guys might be falling short of your goal here. I set the bar very high. 888 likes to continue streaming. Let's go. You guys always say, what's the goal to keep going? And then I give you guys one, and we're going to fall short, so it seems. All in. Aram Zobian moves all in for the button. A very strong looking A6 of hearts. Or sorry, spades. Hearts for Seidel. Got distracted there for a second. Thank you. Thank you, Hunter. Appreciate the like. Now make sure everyone else does it. <laughs> Average stack at this final table, 34 big blinds. Still plenty of play left. The only issue is Anthony Hu is holding most of the chips. 52% <laughs> of the chips in play. What a chip lead. He's going to play this one, too. Ace three of diamonds. Looking over at Di Stefano stack, who's second in chips. I just see him put this in Ten here. Seconds. All in. Basically. There it is. And then who does move all in? Maximum pressure again. So close. <laughs> Must have looked at the 10 first. 500 likes. Okay, creeping up. Let's go. Yeah, I just noticed the Gary says, do we got a giveaway for 500 likes? We do. It's like uh, before it was just kind of like two circles on top of each other. This one's like it's linked in like, like this. Mm. They changed it. The upgraded. Got a graphic designer. What are you talking about? I have no idea. <laughs> Dylan Di Stefano sees things that none of us can see. Love to see it. He's talking about the logo. I think the circles that go around the GO and Poker Go and how they're now linked in. They've <laughs> always been linked in. Yes, they have. <laughs> they always have. He said, we've, he said we've upgraded to now a linked in logo. We, it's always been linked together yep. <laughs> from the start. There are just different versions <laughs> of the logo. That's true. That's true. Do appreciate everyone Ooh. for chiming in. We'll, ex we'll extend the stream a little bit longer. We got a, a break break coming up probably in about half an hour. We'll go at least to the break and then we'll reevaluate. Well, you guys are lucky. Remco's feeling nice today. Feeling nice today. Well, we did we did hit our subscriber goal by quite a l big margin. So I want to reward everyone who is new to our channel, all our new subscribers on YouTube. We do appreciate you all, and I uh, just want to remind everyone that we have lots of highlights highlights on our channel every single day. Not only the, re the, the the long form videos, but also the shorts. And I've been oh, yeah. trying to mix in some like high stakes poker season one 
and some old school World Series of Poker highlights into our offering of shorts. So trying to just be the most complete YouTube channel out there in the poker world. Luca says Chitwick would have killed this tournament. Donnie, where is Stephen Chitwick? Heard he's on holiday. Wow. Just taking a break. How can you be on holiday when you're Stephen Chitwick? <laughs> when I didn't think that guy did anything else but yeah, play poker. Exactly. <laughs> he lives and breathes poker. More chips for Anthony Hu. Just continues to pick him up. Nearing four million once again. 55% of the chips in play, 96 big blinds. Short stack Brian Kim on 14 bigs, Seidel just ahead of him, 15 bigs. Being says, can we get Donnie a poker coach and Duckworth a dad coach? <laughs> That's pretty funny, actually. From all these uh, family plot segments, Donnie, are you concluding that that Tim, Tim Duckworth is a is a bad father? Is he a bad father to his child? I don't think he's a bad father. No, not at all. <laughs> I might be a bad poker player, but he's definitely not a bad father. He does spend an awful lot oh. of money on himself. <laughs> oh yes. Around Zobian all in for 915k from the small blind, attacking Anthony Hu, who is known to raise with bad cards. Once again, tried to get away with one here with 5 3 offsuit. Oh, Donnie, you can probably answer this question. Chris is wondering how many did not make the final table? Did he at least get to eat something greasy in atrocious fashion? He came in with a bag of food. I believe it was from Javier's oh. at Aria. Nice. So probably wasn't too greasy. Our, uh, Javier's is, you know, pretty good food. Not the greasiest. I didn't see him eat any of it, though, because he was on the opposite side of the studio. Wait, how are you not doing hand-for-hand -hand coverage? I'm just, I'm, I'm over it. Watching his every move. I'm, I'm just... How many at the WSOP? I'm in. <laughs> how many at the outside? Like, he, he's, he's got a lot to prove. And it starts with showing up at these PGT events earlier in the series, playing everything, stop with the late reg and stuff, really try and be the best in the world if that's what you claim to be. Di Stefano here with two tens. Folds over to Kim. He's gonna give it up also with the King Deuce. Very tricky battle there between Brian Kim and Eric Seidel who are sitting on 13 and 14 big blinds respectively. It's like a game of chicken, Donnie. Oh, yeah. Second cash of the series for Dylan DiStefano. Bite for bite coverage, Donnie, being suggested by Chris. <laughs> Big drawing hand here for Anthony, who picks up Ace King offsuit of the red variety. What do you think it's like going out to eat with him? It's like it's oh just like slamming down food. Zobian. Oh, wow. Fighting back. Would you prefer to make the call there in position, or do you think the stacks are getting too shallow to you know, play uh, I think it's like a that? good spot, just given what we've seen from Hu so far. You know, Zobian obviously is well aware that Zobian, that Hu, sorry, is opening quite wide. It just so happens that he picks up a hand in this spot. Eric Seidel on a tricky spot. Hasn't seen too many big hands. Got the ace jack of clubs here, but fair bit of aggression in front of him. Wow. Seidel likely not so much worried about who as he is about Zobian. and gives it up. Wow, so Zobian saving Eric Seidel's tournament life here, Donnie. Oh, yeah. Had Zobian elected to just give that one up, 
we'd probably see Eric three bet shove. We'd see who call. How much server time on one point one? Given how unlucky Seidel has been, we're probably going to see king queen ten of clubs on the flop. <laughs> We did hit our 500 like mark to do the annual sub giveaway. We'll do it after this hand. We'll do our giveaway question. One second. Like always, everyone is eligible for the giveaway. All you have to do is submit your answer. 375. Oh, here we go. Wow. Giving Zobian an out. raising war here. Zobian quickly folds. Does not fall for it. Time for the giveaway, and since I'm very hungry, Donnie, I want. People yeah, I've, I've requested the, the food. The so. menu. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. Uh, since uh, since since we've done this in the past and we've gotten some really funny responses, I just wanna. I want you to give me your three favorite pizza toppings. I know Donnie's three favorite pizza toppings are cheese, cheese, and cheese. <laughs> uh, so not very creative there on Donnie's part. We'll look back here at Zobian with the insta fold. Hello. When who fought back? It sounded like the voice of Eric Seidel. That did. Eric Seidel all in with Ace King, okay. 535k. Let us know in the chat your three favorite pizza toppings. We'll pick a random winner to give an annual PokeGo subscription. Action folds around. Eric Seidel, by the way, wearing the Ace of Spades shirt. Did you manage to track down where he got the sweater from yesterday? Negative. I wonder where he gets his shopping done. We can't swagged out, man. We can't. We can't, we can't read the sleeves either. It says WKS. What does that stand for? WKS, WKS, WKS. <coughs> Some sort of designer brand. I don't know what it is. I'm sure we could find out. <laughs> I'm sure I could do some looking. Maybe the chat can help us. Help us track down that shirt that Eric Sedell is, wa is wearing. And does it cost more or less than a hundred and? Sixty dollars. Action folds the bill and these the Stefano King four suited on the button. Oh, we got so many pieces in the chat. Love it. Pineapple, meat lovers, and chicken. Is that one pizza or are you describing three different pizzas? <laughs> That's very intense. That's very Basically intense. anything that you could put on a pizza, just put it on the pizza. Just whatever you have. <laughs> I'll take it. Di Stefano with a conservative fold there, letting go of the King Four. Yeah, I see some. I see some people saying cl uh, clams on a pizza. That's very popular on the East Coast, isn't it? A clam pizza. I think uh, it's not popular. I don't know what the hell that is. What's, what's that place about. again in uh, New Haven? Peppy is Peppy's. They make the clam pizza. Someone in the chat, tell me about the, the clam pizza tradition in on the East Coast. I believe it's New Haven style. Probably a very focused tradition. <laughs> anyway. Here's a look at the final table chip counts presented by Hair Club. Anthony Hu up top, 4 million chips, more than half the chips in play, 101 big blinds. And the two men at the bottom of the standings, Eric Sandell and Brian Kim, looking for a quick double up, or else they will be the next to go. Thanks all so much for tuning in. We appreciate everyone hanging out with us. Send in your favorite pizza toppings. I'll draw a random winner in just a few minutes. Spicy capicola, red onions, and hot honey. I, I can get into that. It sounds great. Lots of double meat for you guys. I hope you guys are all healthy at home. What about a good veggie pizza? <coughs> Seidel all in again. This time up against Anthony Hu. Who raised enough to put Seidel all in? He made the call from the big line with Ace King of Spades. And red funnily enough, red, yeah. the Ace of Spades on his shirt. Red's good against red. red and against also the card that he is looking for. Up. Seidel ahead versus who, but hey, five cards to come. This could go in any direction. Seidel sweating it yet again. Flop comes. Wow, <laughs> queen, seven, ten, all uh, spades. Hello. Royal, <laughs> royal flush draw for Eric Seidel. Can he pull oh, it off? It, Dealer, slow down. <laughs> slow down. Yeah, oh. we got to sweat the royal. Come on. <laughs> no royal for Seidel, but I stream. believe this is we the first all in he's won in like least, four you know? final tables. This is 0% on the flop. <laughs> Sorry.
Sorry, it didn't work out for you. <laughs> we got so many, so many submissions. Anthony, who can laugh at that flop? <laughs> Stone dead, just right away. The next one. I promise. Not versus me, though. Yeah, right. After the next hand, yeah, I, I will announce the winner of the free annual PokeGo subscription. By the way, if you're just tuning in, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, do all that good stuff. We appreciate you. Here's a look at the payouts. Austin's played with 50K. Next player out gets 67,200. And Brian Kim's name has sort of been penciled into fifth place unless <laughs> he manages to find a double up. He is our short stack with 11 big blinds. Certainly going to have to find it. Do you think Brian's going to play the 25K die? 390. It's kind of like a satellite. I know he asked me how the point scoring works for oh. the 25K and 50K. So, I mean, sounds like he's interested. He, uh, I believe he played the 25K high roller that uh, was held during the WPT World Championship at the win. So, and then think uh, he had a he had a eighth place finish previously here at the Poker Girl Cup and then obviously this result wherever he ends up. So he has some points in order to be incentivized to chase that leaderboard. And I also do think he's interested in the bigger picture, you know, trying to become one of the top 40 players on the PGT leaderboard over the course of the entire 23 se 2023 season in order to qualify for that season ending PGT championship that is going to have a $1 million free roll. Pretty insane. You better start collecting your points early to give yourself a good chance. Of course, that race is going to heat up as the year goes on, and I can only imagine the competition will get tougher as we get closer and closer to the end of the year. Who with the bet here? Brian Kim. Very, very, very shallow stacked here. Does flop a deuce. Moves all in with the deuce. Great timing. Who doesn't have it? Excellent timing. And Brian man. Kim picks up some much needed chips. He's still the short stack, but just generated himself some more fold equity the next time he's going to move all in. All right, time to pick a winner in our giveaway. Jimmy Bluffett says, stuffed crust or overrated? Stuffed crust is very overrated. Pizza is a beautiful thing. It's, it's been perfected <laughs> for hundreds of years. No need to Eric, mess with it. we have like 1.1 1 .1 now. 1.2. 1.2, thank you. I wish I could do the Eric Sale accent like Brad Hanks does. 1.230. Thank you. Action falls to Aram Zobian with ace-eight offsuit. Winner of the giveaway, by the way, Jeff Zucala. Z-U-C-C-A-L-A. -C -C -A -A. Jeff Zucala. Congrats, Jeff. You win a free year of PokerGo. Focus on the other guys. Please email social at pokergo.com with a screenshot of you logged into your YouTube account. And we'll credit you with an annual subscription as soon as we get to it. Congrats, Jeff. Keep those likes and subscribes going on the ch on the channel. We do appreciate it. And let us know who you're rooting for. Are you, are you still in the Seidel camp, or or perhaps you're warming up a little bit to the style of Anthony Hu? I really enjoy watching him play. Plays a ton of hands. Extremely aggressive. Does also know when to slow it down. Action folds to Brian Kim on the button with the deuces. Like deuces have have like they've they've lost some in the last few years. Back in the day, we'd always see flops with those. Oh yeah, quack quack baby. Exactly. Might see Kim just put this in here. Does fold it. Wow. It's just deuces are so tricky to play. It's just the lowest pair possible. Stefano just gives. Oh, oh I'm so good at this game. 
finds a seven it off. Was close too. There's seven five off. Do you think you would have called the shove from seven Brian Kim with a seven off, Tony? Fourteen bigs. Yes. Wow. I think you would have thought about it. I think you would have called. I think it was like nine seven off. I don't understand how it's fair that Eric's wearing the Ace of Spades on his shirt, and then he just wins a massive hand with the Ace of Spades and the King of Spades. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, it's... Like he pulled it out of Alice in Wonderland or something. <laughs> All part of the simulation. Manifesting. Yeah, manifesting. <laughs> uh, I guess I'm manifesting pocket deuces or something. Eric said hell is... Not uh, the best. <laughs> definitely not the best hand. <laughs> Willing his way to a win <laughs> here. Take it. Well, maybe you win with it. Well, he's got the third deuce there, so he's actually okay. What? Isn't there a third deuce on the other side? There's a, it's a bunch of deuces, quads. Yeah, quads. so <laughs> I think you're good. A a 85 before the answer. Thank you. Sure. Daniel Bailey says, title promises Osmus. Where is Osmus? Someone get Jeremy Osmus on the phone. Where did he go? How did we That's lose nice. him? So, wow. Uh-oh. Wow. Here we go. Aram Zobian wakes up with a dream hand. I know someone that, that has Anthony, whose big one, shove one, backfires one, one, one. once again. First, he Did doubled he up ten. Eric Seidel. Will he oh, now also right. double up Aram Zobian? Just channel your inner Nick your Pete. Nicky yeah, I think I have better equity versus this uh, because Think of him chugging beer in a log cabin. <laughs> Excellent content by Nicky. Nicky Pete will guide you home. On Darren Elias' Twitter page back Six? in the day. Here comes the flop. Six, king, queen, oh, and a spade. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just Pair of sixes, not backdoor possible. flush draw. <laughs> Chip leader salvating, trying to crack those aces. You can call for ten of spades. It's okay. Go I'm going to um, call for a six. Turn card, sure. four of diamonds. <laughs> a six or a seven for who or otherwise. He'll double up his second player in three or four hands. Ram Zobian, very close to being close. a strong Center contender close. here. River card. Seven of hearts, missed Ten of hearts, Aram Zobian doubles up. Five-handed play ten. continues. Dude, he's been like Sean Winter. He's been manifesting really, really hard. Anthony, who was Chip Lee, he, he called it seven early. Eight, eight, but he just didn't know where it was coming from. This guy, man. 550, 600. Can you break one of those down? Eight forty-five. All right, money's going to a good man. I'm okay with that. <laughs> You mean it? That's Anthony, who just paying the bills, Donnie. Oh, we're gonna give him the blue chip. Here's a look at some stats. What do you make of this? Still aggressive. Yeah. I mean, I mean, yesterday we saw the V pip number was 67 uh, percent. Five more. Five more. Preflop raise 52 percent. Yeah, three bet 11 percent. He just started the day with 96 yeah, big blinds, yeah, now yeah. down to 62 big blinds, but he's been giving himself lots of chances to make things happen yep. and or hasn't been too 845. fortunate in the showdown department just yet. Besides, of course, that one time where he had his king versus the queens <laughs> of Jeremy so Osmond. win the next one. <laughs> yep. I, my powers are not, uh, not on point. The piece Listen of stock continues that in the okay. chat. We'll have to see it. Hey, it wouldn't be a good story if it was too easy. There's a lot of lucky people at this table. It's very, very scary. People in the chat saying that jacks are the hardest hand to play. Any hand I deal, I get dealt, I find really hard to play. There's just so many things that can go wrong. Di Stefano here with a raise. From the cutoff. No one finding anything to play with. <coughs> Let me remind you all at home we have a new season of High Stakes Book coming out in just seven days. Episode one airing on January 24th. It should, should be a blast to get back into the High Stakes Poker streets. 1.7 around. 171. Yeah. Really feels good. Like 
What's the Something hardest random. hand to play, Jack? Let us know. Like I see people say jacks, <laughs> ace, queen, or tens. You'll see it. I had the good. What do you think is the hardest hand to play? I did. Really? Uh. What What gets you in trouble, Donnie? I get in a lot of trouble. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I always find the the, the medium pairs hard yeah, to figure the out. Medium pairs are always tricky. My favorite hands to play are like small suited connectors. Because if, if I whip the flop, it's easy to, to, to part ways with them. Who here with a raise? A6 suited. Zobian finding it enough to play back with. Fives on the button. Potentially open up, opening up a spot for Brian Kim here if he picks up a hand. Does not. We got, we got quite a few submissions in the chat. King, queen, king, jack, ace, jack, ace, queen. Don't we uh, draw for hands at five minutes? Ace, ten, ace, jack. Yeah. Paul, Alan. Paul, Paul, shouldn't we be drawing for hands? Always happens with those top pros there on top of the rules. <laughs> Explain, Donnie, the, the new rule about drawing for hands. So once they get down to certain level of the tournament, um, when it approaches the end of every level, they draw for a number of hands to play as opposed to letting the level complete. So usually in these tournaments with 40 minute blind levels, they'll pause the clock with five minutes left. Tournament director will draw for a number of hands. They'll play out those hands. That way it de-incentivizes anyone that's trying to stall at the table even when it's a final table you might stall in a fashion where you know you target the big blind to land on somebody else you know they have a shorter stack so they get priced in at the higher level and miss it at the lower level something like that has happened in these events before um, and that then led to the, the rule being implemented David says, no disrespect intended, but Zobian looks like he's wearing a disguise. <laughs> I like that. If he just gets home at night and takes the beard off, puts it on his... Uh, yeah, just peels it off. On his, his, on his bed stand. <laughs> nice stand. River comes in for Anthony Hu. Still a pretty scary, look, scary looking board. Nathan says, oh. Quick fold from Zobian. And Anthony, who is back to chipping up and <laughs> very close again to his starting stack. He started with such a big chip lead that he's played. He's played so many hands already <laughs> at this final table. He's won 17 of them, Shut and no. he's still down on the day. Me? Me. Tristram Coffin says, this is my first uh, book we'll live event. This is pretty cool. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate it. <clears throat> 40. people in favor of the rule change as far as the remaining hands in the level. I think it's a good one as well. Wh what happened to our menu, by the way, Donnie? Good question. I, I sent the message. We talked about pizza for about 20 minutes, and now I'm starving. Yeah, man. Let's see if Brian Kim wants to put this in here. He hasn't had too much to work with. Gives it up. Good discipline. It's always tricky when you haven't seen a hand for quite some time and you see kind of one of those marginal holdings but it just looks better because you've just seen a bunch of crap for the last hour and a half or something like that. Those are probably the hands that get me in trouble. Oh, and Shove here from DiStefano. Zobian gives it up.
Still nothing for Kim. That shove from Di Stefano on the last hand allowed him to leapfrog Eric Seidel on the leaderboard. Who picks up the ace jack off? Good hand from the big blind. Like we see him put some more chips in. I think Anthony, who is in the sh on the sh my short list for players I would want to play against with the big stack. Oh. He just seems like he recognizes the situations yeah. extremely well and puts incredible amount of pressure on you. He's just really fun to watch. From a, pers from a spectator point of view, watching someone with a 60% VPIP, I mean, that's just <laughs> off yeah. the charts. Brian Kim, meanwhile, you know, totally handcuffed, can't do much. We know Brian Kim is a creative and aggressive player, but with his current stack size, there's just nothing he can do. Yeah, and then, and then you know, Kim being handcuffed kind of handcuffs these other players, you know, Seidel, Zobian, Di Stefano, where they're really going to have to just pick up a hand because they're in that weird middle ground where they're, you know, they're kind of just waiting around to see Kim go away. And then once that happens, the play will likely open up a bit. Unless they have some real premium hands to fight back against you with. I like you're just going to see a lot of folding and a lot of small pots going over to who. Meanwhile, PGT.com has live reporting of event number six, 25K No Limit Hold and Buy-In. Ed Sebesta is, no is your current chip leader. Yes, let's go. Action Ed. Ed the best. It's so good. I, love, I would love to see Ed Sebesta make another run time. at a final table. Live reporting going on daily on pgt.com. By the way, keep an eye on the website because we got lots of good stuff happening there as well. We're doing we're doing um, giveaways as well. We're doing that uh, play.pgt.com. Play.pgt.com daily giveaway contest. Pick 'em contest. Just head on over to play p l a y dot pgt.com. You can enter some of our contests that we go ha have going on over there. Completely free to enter. We usually give away some Poker Go Shop gift cards if you top the leaderboard. You know, you do things like you pick uh, pick who's going to win the tournament, pick if the first flop's going to be all red, all black, <laughs> how many times people will get aces, stuff like that. So play.pgt.com. <coughs> Looks like we're going to break. It does look like we're going to break. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to keep going after the break. We love it way too much to leave you guys stranded here. Hair Club presents to you these following chip counts. Anthony Hu at the top of the counts. 2.8 million chips, 72 big lines. Brian Kim still our short stack. Just 12 big lines for Brian Kim, but a comeback, of course, is still very much possible. We'll be back in just a minute. Awesomeness with more than $13.2 million. Career live tournament earnings. Number one and number two on that list, Justin Bonomo and Bryn Kenny, complete no-shows for these series. I don't even think they care about the award anymore or the honor. The all-time money list. Well, I, yeah, I, think I mean, so. you got to show yeah. up. These are the biggest buy-in events that right. are happening it, in your backyard. They cared, if they cared, they'd be here. Right. Maybe we should remove them. You can't just take them off the all-time money list. Well, if you're not active, I, I think you... You just have Dang. to be removed. 
disagree. King Jack four pairs for both here, blind versus blind. Another four on the turn after those check check on the flop. This is trouble for said Al. His hand is too strong to really consider folding. Definitely not this street, and I'm afraid the river may be much the same. Let's see. He's a Hall of Famer. I'll never be one. That's true. Total blank, really. Uh, card changes nothing. Brazilian, it's just about value town. How much do we try and eke out? What are we targeting? Probably a jack, maybe a stubborn ace high sort of holding. He's really only concerned about a four, and if he were up against the four, he would simply just bet and then face a raise from Seidel. But for the times you are up against a jack, you try and sort of get the max, right? Time bank used for another 30 seconds to act. Goes with 155,000. This is very tough for Seidel. A line that doesn't look like should be bluffing very often. The flop goes check, check. Zobian bet turn and bet river on this sort of board. Do you really think he has a bluff? And by the way, that's why people do bluff in these spots mm -hmm. because it just doesn't look possible. Beautiful. Nice lay down that is hard Seidel. to do. That is hard to do. Very nice fold there. King now for the aforementioned two. And two queens for Jeremy Osmus. Collision course has been charted. Osmus is the shortest stack, 23 big blinds. know what's going to eventually happen. It's going in. That's with a small three bet to 150K. Like 7, 20-ish. One glance back at that ace king. And here we go. The all in, the call, and a massive flip here at event number five. The 2022 Poker Go Cut champion, Jeremy Osmus. All in and at risk with two queens up against Anthony, who's ace. This is my series, you know? Sorry, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs>
He brought out the glasses. Do you have no opinion on that? I'm, I'm trying to think. <laughs> think, he, think, like, think quick, Donnie. Think he quick. obviously brought him out at the final table yesterday, or at, at least at the start, right? Then he switched and brought him out last night at some point when they were kind of close to the to the money, and now he's bringing him out again. I don't know if it's like a superstitious thing or if it's a thing where he, you know, is quote unquote blinded by the lights. Blinded <laughs> by the lights. I think they look cool. They do. <laughs> Just to recap, Anthony, who is our chip leader, started as chip leader. Still our chip leader is up only 5K since the start of the day. Brian Kim here defending his big blind with Jack-7 off. Two. No, no, it's more. Poor timing for Brian Kim. However, 7-5-9 rolls off the deck. All of a sudden, Brian Kim takes the lead. However, he's not in the clear just yet. Kim started this hand with only nine big blinds, desperately looking for a double up. Double gutter here for who? Middle pair for Kim. I think this is going in. Especially evidenced by what we saw earlier from Kim willing to get it in with the five deuce on the jack four deuce board. I think Kim's stack is just small enough and who has enough equity that he's going to want to just put this in here. Yeah, very interesting situation. What kind of hands is, is who thinking that Kim can do this kind of move with? Lots of pairs. Wow, moves all in. Brian Kim, don't think he's going to get away from this. Makes the call. All in on a call here. Brian Kim's tournament life at risk. 11 outs twice for Anthony Hu. Very interesting situation here. Anthony Hu has been involved in many all-ins already at this final table. Brian Kim found one double up. It? Lost a few chips. Now yeah. he's got another chance. Okay. Are, you, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> like not Turn card. The other ones. Let's see it. King of spades doesn't change a thing. 11 outs again for Anthony Yuhu here. Or maybe we'll see Brian Kim double up again. River card. It is the 10 yeah, of diamonds. Good. Brian Kim eliminated in fifth place. <coughs> First hand after the break takes home $67,200. Quickly makes his way off the stage, and a little bir birdie just told me he jumped straight into I the 25K, no limit. I thought it wasn't coming. No. We're down to four hand to play. Who you got? Can anyone yeah. challenge Anthony Who? Want him to bust? <laughs> I'm, the small, I'm the small boy. No, you're the big. Anthony Who's running the glasses. Try to sneak one through. through. Yeah. Oh, I became see, I see. lethal here me? Yeah. in the showdown department. Okay. Bosses must Bad be point. good luck. I don't like that. No. Put him on. Bust the player. So you said you left the glasses at home? No, I left it in my car. Uh, did you run out to your car to get your glasses? Yeah, of course. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> they must dead. be lucky then. You would have you won the 7 6 yeah. with the glasses. <laughs> yeah. So now, next all in. It... No, you messed it up. It's all off now. <laughs> <laughs> Point two, Eric. Yeah, got it. Eric Seidel has been picked on a lot, Donnie. Well, yeah. Let's see if he goes for it again. Could, could be picked on some more here. 
By the way, Donnie, I know this is, might take some math. Can you give us an update on the on the implications of the standings now that we are down to the final four? Meanwhile, Anthony, who comes in with the three bet, and Eric Sedell <laughs> tosses. Eric Sedell tosses. Tosses. I don't want to play this one. Queen four into the muck. You're right. Me? Uh, oh, it did. Right. I, I just threw it there. By the way, I can see your cards and your shades, by the way. You tried that yesterday. <laughs> Yesterday, I think I could actually. The problem, the problem is when you troll me, it's like it's too it's obvious. No, it's hard no, to do no, it from this. No, no, like, like I, I, I believe it for like two seconds. Yeah, that's good enough for him. Yeah, yeah, but it, it's great. <laughs> well, Jeremy Osmus and Brian Kim busting first doesn't shake Race. up the top of the leaderboard too much. Jeremy Osmus improved to 89 points on the series, and Brian Kim up to 98. However, what will happen to Seidel based upon his finish today? Seidel, right now guaranteed 84 points, jumps up to 181 total, so that moves him into the top 10, actually allows him to leapfrog Terry Katz and get into 7th place, and then he can move up the leaderboard from there depending on his finish. If Seidel were to go on to win this tournament, he'd have 366 points which, depending on how these other guys finish, could possibly put him in first place. Or at least within the top three. Pretty confident in saying that he would get into the top three for sure with a win. Of these four remaining players, Zobin is the one who can finish this tournament with the most points. A win for Zobin puts him on 527. A win for Anthony Hu puts him on 504. <coughs> and Dylan DiStefano, a win would put him on 335. So if Anthony Hu wins this, he's going to be playing defense the rest of the way. Hu or Zor Zobian? Zobian as well, yeah, yeah of course. Of you know, course. both of them yeah. would, would hop up over 500. Um, very much, you know, kind of just trying to, to cash in any one of the remaining three events to to sort of pad their lead and, and really put a lock on it and put the pressure on, you know, the players going into these final two 25Ks of the series and then that finale, the 50K. Always want to sweat going into the 50K, I think. You know, you it's just better, better for competition that uh, the race isn't locked up yet. But you also want to have, you know, you don't want everyone in the 50K to be able to I win it. Heard that line in the just a handful of people, right. depending on certain I'm scenarios. Well, you, you, want, <laughs> so you want to not be in a situation <laughs> where someone who has one min cash like yeah. can win the tournament and then win the cup. We Same did put a new hand. rule in for this and, uh, year that you have to have at least one cash prior to the 50K oh. in order to win the cup. So you can't just swoop in for the 50K, wow. win it, and win the cup. That's not, it's not going to work like that. Okay. That's, actually, that's actually pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah. It's an interesting, like a, she, she's interesting like, oh change. God, like, are, you, are you serious? Because she really wanted to wear shades, but she's like, I can't now. Just tuning in, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and like today's video. <laughs> I was a little ambitious with the likes, but I do appreciate everyone. Much love to our entire community on YouTube. We've got so much good stuff mm. for you guys coming this year. I can't wait to share it all. Of course, who, who's excited for WSOP, by the way, in the chat? I know it's January, but I'm already itching for some World Series Boker action. Of course, we are in full preparation of everything that's to come at the World Series Booker, so maybe my mindset is already a bit more, you know, I'm, I'm already at Bally's, <laughs> a.k.a. the horse horseshoe. Is it, is it going to be or officially the horseshoe? Yeah, I think it already is the horseshoe. It already is the horseshoe. Well, I know they renovated their poker room. They got yeah. new carpet. It all looks wonderful. Uh, I, can't, I can't wait to see it all. The Cowboys. They're having a WSB circuit event in February, and it's the WSB circuit event at the horseshoe, so. Oh, wow. So that with the race here, who might get creative? Who gonna just call, take a shot at possibly busting one of these shorter stacks if he gets a favorable flop? Ten, one five, pair. eight, 
Maybe not enough, but... Rodella asks, when the full WSB 2023 schedule will be announced? Don't know yet. They've only announced a handful of events. They announced the dates and the handful of events. A few of the marquee weekend ones, I guess? Yeah, so the, the dates are May 30th through July 18th. Um, you guys can head to WSOP.com to check out the announcement of some key events, or PGT.com, we have a story up there as well. Obviously the main event, the dates for that have been announced. They're going to kick off this year's series with the Mystery Bounty. I believe it's called the Million Dollar Bounty. They're oh, guaranteeing, wow. for 1K buy-in, guaranteeing two things. They're guaranteeing a top bounty prize of a million dollars, which last year that went to Mac Lance. And then <laughs> the change for this year is they're guaranteeing first place in that tournament at a million dollars. Oh, my God. Last year, first place was, I think, seven or 800000 So um, making sure that that first place prize gets boosted a bit. That's going to be one heck of an opening tournament. I mean... Several several starting days, you can fire multiple bullets in that thing. So the energy at Paris was off the charts yep. it, on that day that they were doing the bounties. It was phenomenal. Shout out to Jeff Platt and the Pirate for <laughs> hosting that show. <laughs> Meanwhile, Eric Sadell chipping up, Donnie. There you go. Don't call it a comeback. Pocket Kings. All right. Bring on the techno music. Goes very well with Mr. Seidel. Here's a look at his career highlights, of course. Finishing second in the 1988 WSB main event. Let us know in the chat who won that event. I can't really remember. Um, first seven-figure cash, third in the Foxwoods World, uh, Foxwood Poker Classic in 2008. And then his biggest cash came not too long ago. Eric Sedell, legend of the game. Poker Hall of Famer. Dylan Stefano, ace five off on the button. Race. Min raise to 100k. <coughs> just uh, careful with your cards. I didn't see it, but I can see like just the end on that one. Oh, when I was peeling him? Yeah. Initially or the lazy one? The lazy one, but he hasn't acted yet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, my bad. Not trolling. There you see the chip denominations Bacca, for so I, chips I know the in play. Corners pretty well. Blues are 5Ks, purple or lavender are 25Ks, and those yellow and black, the bumblebees as we call them, 100,000. Stefano active again, king 8 of diamonds. Seidel, ace, jack, offsuit, gets the job done. <coughs> Luke Rock asked, how do I improve my game? One month beginner. Well, Luke, you are in the right place. Watching great poker content here on Poker Go. Not that Remco and I necessarily know anything, but these players certainly do. Some of the absolute best in the world. Watch their games. Try and figure out what they're doing. <laughs> Always ask yourself why they might be doing something. And there's plenty of free content out there. Just do some, you know, searching around on YouTube. You can find lots of good stuff. And then, of course, play. Get, get experience. You have to get experience in poker. Anthony Hu here moves all in. King, queen, offsuit. Zobi in there, fold the ace, deuce of hearts. De Stefano, pocket fours. De Stefano, the shortest stack remaining, 21 bigs. Gives it up. Power of the big stack, baby. Yeah, a good one. Me too. Yeah, like ace nine. 
Better. East 10. Better than East 10. Get a pair. Stefano get the shove through. It's almost like uh, who's going to put the chips in first is going to win the pot. <laughs> Just given given how the stacks are distributed here. Remember watching the? Uh, did you watch the free roll? Yeah, the 500k. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. I think it was like. Uh, Someone asked Sean what he had, and he just like said something really quick. I'm like, but it like wasn't even close to his cards. And he's just like, the commentator's like, why did you lie? Like, what's, what's <laughs> one point three. This is one one nine to five. Thank you. Anthony, who King Jack off in the small blind? Zobian is in the big blind. Zobian on twenty five bigs. There's the shove. Gets through. Coming up in not too long, High Stakes Poker Season 10, the season premiere on Tuesday, January 24th, exclusively on Poker Go. Use the promo code WATCH, HSP10, for $20 off your first year of a new annual subscription. Daniel Negron is back. Antonio Esfandiari returns. Eric Person makes his debut. Gentili's going to be on there. I teased Bobby Baldwin's going to be on there. That's all I'm giving you. High Stakes Poker Season 10. Most iconic cash game in the land. Spew money are awake at like noon. You know what I mean? Like, like us, but like... You'd be surprised how long the line gets for that place. I'm not saying it's not popular. I'm saying they could do... They could, we could do better? They could do like... They could make money all the hours well, after 2 p.m. I think like till 5 p.m. would be perfect because yeah. 2 to 5, no restaurants are open. So... You have a favorite spot around here? Or at least on the strip or something? Um... Depends on like what kind of what you're asking for it's like yeah. lots of great tie yeah. spots yeah. there's like literally like five great tie spots here what's like um when someone goes what's your spot you have a spot you know honestly my spot is like you remember the taco stand the oh yeah i used to come in yeah jeremiah I'm back on place. yeah i i love it what did i, I miss I your egg sandwich yeah, you, you know. I think I might set a record for fastest to eat a. Mm, I, yeah. I said to our colleague Tim Douglas, I said the egg sandwiches very, uh, need to be a, like that's what range. they need to give us for food every day. Oh, every day? So every day. What the hell with these Cabriati sandwiches and this other stuff? Like, yeah, give yeah, us the yeah, egg sandwich. The egg sandwich. Is it true that bagels have like comparatively a lot of calories? Yeah, I mean, just they're like when you bite into a bagel, how dense is that yeah, bread? Yeah, fact. <laughs> it's not like, yeah, I just thought well, you know, at least with the with the cheese, the egg, and some bacon, you're getting some protein in there. You're getting true. some fats. That's not true. Not just all carbs. More has been there. I just scarfed down a bacon, egg, and cheese Kabuto? bagel, yeah. which is very good. What kind of bagel? It's, it's white. No, it's like very. So just plain. Just plain. Mine was on an everything bagel. So lucky. For the price. Meanwhile. Seidel chipping up through Zobian. Really? My family. You liked it? This, this, this whole sort of tiptoeing and dancing back and forth between and, uh, who gets to face Anthony who heads up <laughs> is a really <laughs> intriguing <laughs> battle <laughs> until yeah, yeah, yeah. Anthony who himself I, I makes a misstep. It's, it's it's a very, very yeah, tense moment it's here it's at this like final it's table. It's Any one of these the players can still easily win this tournament, but they could also easily be the next one out. Who do you guys think is going to be the next player out? Let us know in the chat. By the way, thank you so much for engaging with us. Being here, subscribing, liking, all that good stuff. We really love having you all to hang out with. Saw one, I guess, slight misstep earlier when 
who shoved the small blind with 7-6 off, and Zobian woke up to aces in the big blind and doubled through him. Not necessarily a misstep, you know, just Zobian waking up with a hand to make the call there. But that's also why it helps to constantly stay on the gas, constantly build your chips as the chip leader, because then the times when things don't go your way, you can, you know, you can absorb those hits. Those two were pretty A tier. S tier. Yeah. Wow. I asked the chat who's going to be the next player out, and the majority like, says like Anthony Hoop. Wow, really? Okay. You big That's a pretty maker. bold statement. Zobian aces uh, again. Yeah, why not? Burgers, the burgers, the burgers, baby. The ace burgers, as Phil Hummy called them. Mark from CT wants more poker strategy. Donnie, take us through this hand. Do well, it for Mark. You have aces, so you're going to raise. There you go. I mean, Daniel Negreanu has been doing the whole limping his pimping thing. <laughs> I called him out on the Poker Girl podcast. I said, you know, Daniel, you always you always talk about this limping thing and how your range is uncapped. You can limp with kings and aces, and you can have that sort of stuff. And I said, you know, Daniel, we need to see you limp with the premiums. <laughs> and then what does he do? I believe it was this tournament on day one. Right. He limped with kings. Somebody jammed. He pulls his phone out. Oh, my God. Takes a video yelling at me, <laughs> saying, Donnie Peters, see, look, I limp with kings. <laughs> Calls. He's up against Ace Queen, and he wins. So yes, Daniel does limp with the premiums. Interesting balancing strategy there. As who comes in with the three bet from the big line? This, of course, purely an ICM play, applying pressure on Zobian. Uh, there's not much of his range that he could really continue with here, right, Donnie? No, this is going to be likely an all-in here for Zobian. I say likely. I mean, you guys might be thinking I'm crazy, but there are times when you want to just call here in position. There it is. Look, he's just calling. Playing a little coy. I like this. Of course, we all understand the risk when you make a play like this. Anthony Hu flops bottom pair. Zobian with 120% pot behind, so... About a one to one stack to par ratio. Small bet from Anthony Hu. Zobian, of course, doing his best to, <laughs> to, to, to like look weak, but not to look weak, but like Contain leveling everything. Leveling maybe. game, containing it all, making sure his, his stick on beer doesn't fall off. Of course, that's a joke. I think Beard looks majestic, but someone in the chat said that it looks like a disguise. Well, right now, it's trying to disguise the strength of his hand. The uh, shallow poker play continues. Always gets me a little bit nervous, Donnie, when people slow play aces. Yeah, but he's in a good spot to slow play this. He has the ace of clubs in his hand, so probably a little bit less likely that he's worried about who having certain flush draws. At least on the flop, probably not worried about hands like, you know, queen four, queen three. Not so sure who would be stepping totally out of line with those hands, although <laughs> he did get a little crazy with the king three. Interesting situation here for Zobian when you consider the fact that he probably doesn't think who has a very strong range, but at the same time, he wants to make the most money possible here with these pocket aces, Donnie. What do you think he's going to do? I think he's going to check behind because he just did. <laughs> Ten of spades on the river. This one locks this one up for Zobian. Of course, there is a possibility that he folds the hand, though, depending on what who does. Who checks again? He's hoping and just hoping that he's caught any of this. I don't know. I'm 
getting the sense that Zobian uh, his breathing has picked up a little bit. You know, it looks like he's trying to kind of contain himself there. Two eighty-five. Two hundred eighty-five thousand. Virtual Joker said he's gonna bet like two eighty-five. He <laughs> bets two eighty-five. That's fanta fantastic. A lot of other guesses were pretty close to the mark, but Virtual Joker nails it. Ten seconds. Would be pretty sick for Sobian if. Anthony Hugh decides to, to jam this. But his appearance looks like he's rather trying to find a call somehow, some way. They often say in poker, if the longer you think about things, the more wrong you think about things. Yes, yeah, usually you talk yourself into a call, you know, Make up some hands that the opponent can have that you can end up beating. Your first instinct is usually right. And at least if you go with that, then at least you can tell yourself, well, I went with my gut. And if you go back and forth, maybe you change your mind, regret, re regret what you changed it to. That might cause a lot more mental anguish. Who not having any clubs in his hand is something he might be thinking about. It's called unblocking, right? Correct. See, I pay attention Meaning, to that. You know, Zobian could have two clubs. Well, what does that mean? That means Zobian could be bluffing a flush shot that doesn't get there. Is Zobian going to turn a hand like an ace, ten of clubs into a bluff? Probably not, given the situation at this final table. King four. Wow. <laughs> close enough. Very close. <laughs> Might as well have just called his two cards exactly. Aram Zobian with the read. Well done. Beautiful stuff there. Nicely played. Can you give me at least one card? Or? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to show the ace of clubs. Decided, like, I don't know. That would have been Probably a good card to show. That, right? Just aces, that's all. Actually? Just aces, that's all. I can't wait to see the replay. You got, yeah, you got an hour. I don't know if you were, I think you were telling the truth about, about the other one, but. Which other one? <laughs> you said you had the goods. I didn't look. Oh, you didn't look? Yeah, I had the good. I didn't have my oh, phone. Oh, sorry, sorry. Um, no, you're good. Uh, one, four, four. Thank you. If you're just tuning in, see a lot of new people joining our feed right now. Yeah. Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. It would be cool to tell our bosses at the end of the day, like, hey, we hit 1,000 likes. That's pretty cool, right? Okay. Well, we're closing in on it, and I do appreciate everyone watching this with us. And a reminder as well, by the way, every 500 likes we give away a free annual subscription to Poker Go. So hey, there's also something in it for you guys at home. Did we do the first giveaway? We did. We did. The winner was, <laughs> I got his name right here. I already announced it. You probably weren't paying attention. I Jeff, Jeff Zucal Zucala. Sorry. My fault. The, p the pizza question, Donnie. Come on. I'm not always paying attention to you. If you're a regular listener to this show, you know that Donnie is on the brink of of becoming a meat eater again um, after having been a vegetarian for the past five years. Please, please, please tell... Pes pescatarian. <laughs> pescatarian? Yeah. Oh, I, fish. I eat the fish. Please tell Donnie in the chat what he's missing out on as far as, as far as the meats. Maybe some good recommendations. By the way, who and Zobian clashing again Let's recap the action here. From the small blind, who made it 175 to go? Zobian called the Jack-7 of spades, who continued then for 200k on this 8-6-5 flop. Donnie, how do you feel about this? Is, is who getting a little out of line as far as his, I guess, eagerness to just constantly play hands and raise and, 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 and get involved? He doesn't have to do this. He doesn't have to, but this is how you win tournaments. I mean, you have to play aggressive. You have to press the edges. 
And I think that's what Anthony Hu is willing to do. I mean, this hand selection here from the small blind, you know, 9-5 isn't probably something you want to be limping with because it doesn't have that much post-flop playability. So you just take more of a polarized strategy and just raise pre-flop. I mean, Zobian, meanwhile, really, but I mean, two, bo both of these guys wow. willing to play wow. and this card. <laughs> wow. When it's working, it's working. And right now, Anthony Hu has got it all figured out. I mean, we saw Zobian raise the flop with his jack high and some backdoor draws. Picking up the showdown value here on the turn <coughs> of the pair of sevens could slow him down. It's a pretty great card, of course, wow. for Anthony Hu. Just a 0%, stone cold. Zobian does slow down there. Oh, wow. That's, that's oh a terrible God. card for Mr. Zobian on the river. Trip sevens. Misery. Anthony Hu with the straight. Pure misery for Aram Zobian, who right now, in this very moment, is still thinking to himself, oh, yes, let's go. I mean, the chat's already saying GG. Uh, we haven't seen it yet, you know. But it certainly doesn't work to Zobian's benefit the pot size versus his stack. 1.3 in the middle, 865 back for Zobian. A spot where I don't think Anthony Hu has to worry about too many full houses from Zobian. Because those hands, he would likely be betting the two pair on the turn. Oh, oh my God. There's what a disaster for Anthony, who Aram Zobian gets shown the bad news. Trip sevens, running sevens, and running he will do out the door. Aram six, Zobian uh -huh. collects 84K yeah. for his fourth place finish. Collects a ton of points, Donnie. We'll get an update on the standings in just a second, but what a dramatic finish for the winner of event number two. Zobian out the door. Anthony, who extends his chip up to 4.7 million. There it is, Eric Seidel, second in chips, 1.3 million. Dylan Stefano sitting on 930K, making his way up the charts with just 18 big blinds. We've got plenty of action still to come. Don't go anywhere as live action continues of the 2023 Poker Go Cup. It's an honor and a pleasure to have you all with us here. We're going to roll straight into three-handed action with a little bit of that Foo Fighters imitation music that I'm a huge fan of. Anthony Hu picks up Ace-9 suited on the button right away. Donnie, what you got for us as far as the standings? Well, Aaron Zobian moves up to 292. I do have to correct myself. I was saying earlier that Zobian and Hu could get over 500. I had my math wrong. Uh-oh. Because we already had sixth place points baked in at the beginning of the day, and I forgot that Tim and I did that. That said, Zobian is the current leader, but of course we know Anthony Hu oh, yeah. is still remaining, and when it settles out and we update that leaderboard, he's going to move to the top. Anthony Hu could go up up as far as 454 points. So would, you know, if that ultimately happens, and right now given this chip lead, it's looking like that's likely going to be the outcome, he would be about 150 points clear of Aram Zobian heading into the final three events of the series. Wow, what a turn of events. We're heading into the crucial stages of this tournament with Eric Seidel and Dylan Stefano now. Both hoping to get heads up with Anthony Hu so they can at least get that pay jump and the extra points. Seidel, however, in a bit of trouble here. But not backing down too easily. And the raise is going to get through. Seidel gets creative and it pays off. Widening the gap between him and Stefano. Crucial stuff, Donnie. Very crucial stuff. I mean, it's very important to be able to widen that gap, as you mentioned. I, I love it. <laughs> this is, I'm happy. I want to hold a trophy, but. <laughs> Di Stefano hasn't had much to work with all day. Been on the shorter side of things for much of this final table, so I'm just, I'm making the final three must feel like. Time on TV. Quite a big <laughs> win.
All in. All in. Eric Sado all in. Di Stefano gives it up. Anthony, who of course finished second yesterday in the final 10K of the series, $140,000 for him. He's already locked up another 117K here. <coughs> Seidel here with Ace Deuce of Hearts on the button. Sorry. Wait, what happened there? That doesn't seem right. I guess Seidel folded the Ace Deuce of Hearts. All in. Stefano, B. Stefano moves all in with Jack 10 offsuit. 300. Anthony Hu looks down at King 3, King three of Spades. Three-handed play continues. Where my where are my Seidel fans at in the chat? People saying Seidel looks like a like a hype beast. One seventy-five. One hundred seventy-five thousand. Who, of course, is going to not slow down here? Is going to continue to attack both Seidel and Di Stefano. Like a million. Uh, yes. This is eight. Uh, okay. Five, six, seven, eight, eight, twenty, eight, eight, eight hundred exactly. Actually, Goodness. this almost feels like they're playing two, two against one. Behind that, one side of the table so has. Eight, 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 so yeah, but it needs to be Dylan and Eric against Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're teaming up the wrong way. Yeah, 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 Team yeah. up against the chip leader. Oh man, that's funny. KB313 says, you guys really watching poker and discussing meat, LOL? Yeah, what else are we supposed to discuss? <laughs> you want to talk cocktails? You want to talk Vegas casinos? You want to talk about traveling? Any, anything goes here in the chat. That's why we just do a fun hangout here on our YouTube channel. If you want a serious analysis, go join Jeff and Brent on PokerGo.com, who are I mean, also, by Brent, the way, Brent way might more be talking about plenty of meat. I mean, he's, he's like a brisket guy, you know, like that. And also talks about the Buffalo Bills way too much, which... I mean, they're still in. Wait, can we get an update on the Anthony Who <laughs> Minnesota all-time money list? Over the course of this live stream, <laughs> that number surely has changed. He is making his way up the ranks extremely fast. You think he's climbed at all? Since I mean, he must time? must have moved up at least one spot. Action on Di Stefano in the small one after Seidel quickly folded. All in. All in is the call, is the move. Oh, my God, he stepped into it. Wow. Anthony Hu wow. snaps it off with the best drawing hand in poker. Ace-king offsuit. Anthony Hu up against <laughs> Dylan Stefano. I mean, I said it before. He's wearing all the lucky charms. But will it help him this time around as Anthony Hu is seemingly unstoppable? Gary reminding me that we are 37 likes away from the goal of 888 likes. We might even get there. All right, let's see the <laughs> flop. Ace, king, Yikes. eight. As close yeah. to dead as possible there for Jack Di Stefano. Clubs. Looking for running cards to stay alive in this event or else we will have Eric Seidel versus Anthony Hu. Yeah, and there it is. Dylan Di Stefano eliminated in third place. Eric Seidel going heads up against Anthony Hu here for this event five title at the 2023 Poker Go Cup. 117K is what Dylan Di Stefano takes home for finishing in third place. Not a bad payday. All right, you made but it. But still, the yeah. biggest money is still up for grabs. <laughs> <laughs>
yesterday's event yeah, like and then who bed. took the chip lead to head to the play. Ultimately lost it. So We're going it. on a quick two minute break. Don't go anywhere. Only a two minute break to get the players ready for heads up play. Here are the chip counts presented by Hair Club. 5.5 million for Anthony Hu versus 1.48 million for Mr. Eric Seidel. Can he make a comeback? We'll find out soon. Don't go anywhere. Heads up play about to get underway. For now, who looks for an ace or a seven? Ten of diamonds. What the hell? <laughs> Six of hearts on the turn, which eliminates one Three of who's outs. Ace or seven, that's not a heart. It's the only path to victory for who, and DeStefano finds the double up to almost 30 big ones. That is huge for DeStefano, now second in chips. He has the jack eight suited here on the button. I think this is the sort of hand where, yeah, we, we just move it all in. Sort of in the middling. Ooh. Oh, Seidel Ooh, wakes Seidel up. with the ace king suited, and here we go. <laughs> Seidel all in and at risk with a premium up against Anthony Hu's jack eight of diamonds. It's been all who today. Red has to. Yeah. Red, red's good. Red's hold. good against red. The shirt red matches Black. the That's hand. Can he find possible. an ace? Who versus Seidel? Oh, my gosh. Oh, queen, 10, 7, oh, all uh, spades. The royal. <laughs> Almost Jack of spades. Almost the whole royal. No, wow. We don't see the royal. We do see the flop flush for <laughs> Eric Seidel, and he will find the double up. we got to make it a, got to make it exciting at least, you know? I don't understand how it's fair that Eric's wearing the ace of spades on his shirt, and then he just wins a massive <laughs> hand with the ace of spades and the king of spades. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah, it's... See? Spooky. Like he pulled it out of Alice in Wonderland or something. <laughs> All part of the simulation. Yeah. Manifesting. Yeah, manifesting. <laughs> Uh, I guess I'm manifesting pocket deuces or something. Yeah, again, with the deuces. Not the best. Kim, they're <laughs> right next not to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll take it. Well, maybe you win with it. Well, he's got the third deuce there, so he's actually a... There it is, the PokerGo studio, just a short walk away from the Aria Resort and Casino Poker Room. This is the 15K No Limit Hold'em final table of event number five of the 2023 Poker Go Cup. My name is Remco Rinkema. Donnie Peters alongside me. Jeff Platt and Brent Hanks are on the call on PokerGo.com to take you guys home and watch the conclusion of this final table as Anthony Hu goes up against the legend Eric Seidel. Anthony Hu's biggest cash ever was 257k back in June of 2022. Eric Seidel, of course, has been notching up six-figure scores from back before most people were born that are playing in these events right now. Seidel coming off a sixth place finish in event number four is going to jump up the standings in the race for the cup. And here's what they are playing for. 176k guaranteed for both players. 268k up top for the eventual winner. That means that Anthony Hu is playing for the largest payout of his live poker career. Whew, I'm excited. I'm excited to see how this is going to go. Can Seidel make a comeback? Let us know in the chat. What do you guys think? I think we're in for a good match here, Donnie. What do you think? Yeah, as long as Seidel can pick up a couple early hands, early pots, I think we're in for a good one. Who picks up a hand right off the top of the deck here? I mean, not sure we should have expected anything else <laughs> the way he's been going today. 140. Face to 140. Seidel makes the call. Has not shown his cards to the reader just yet, so we're going to just play. Oh, I, there they are. Five two suited. Sorry? Good, good. Yeah. 
five deuce suited four side up against ace five off. Wow, interesting flop here right away. Four three four, Donnie. Who with ace high still in the lead, but Seidel picks up an open ended straight draw. Of course, who has one of his outs? Take us through this, Donnie. Is there any merit in raising already now? Of course, 24 big blinds is what Seidel started the hand with, so we're not very deep. We're also not, we're not in a way trying to get all in right away. Yeah, I think Eric Seidel is the type of player to, you know, not go too crazy, not bloat pots too much. Oh, wow. Ace on the turn. Wow. It gives Eric Seidel the wheel. Of course, Anthony Hu could still make a full house due to the paired flop. Anthony Hu going to need an ace or a four. Induced to chop it. Who bets 200k here into 510k? Incredible card for Seidel, who makes the call yet again. Almost a million in the middle. Seidel has pot size left behind. King of spades on the river. Are we going to get it in here, Donnie? Seidel checks again. Who's going to shove here? What do you think? He's contemplating right now. I don't think we're going to see a shove. I'm not sure what Seidel calls, but that's worse. I mean, unless who is deciding to turn his hand into a bluff. But All in. And there wow. it is, of course. I'm always just wrong. Moves all in. Eric Seidel snaps it off. We got ourselves a match, ladies and gentlemen. That's great. <laughs> Seidel <laughs> doubles up. That'll do. And this is a real match all of a sudden. Anthony, who looks at his cards, says, oh, you have a straight? Oh, no, no big deal. Wow. <laughs> Are you not entertained? Hand number one of Heads Up Play. Now, we're, now we got a match. Now we got a now match. Now we got a match. I wonder if any thoughts are slipping into whose mind about <laughs> yesterday's heads up match where he went in with a chip lead and ultimately lost it to Justin Saliba. Is he again thinking 995? Oh no, not again. This is the right moment for Eric Seidel to mention yesterday's heads up play. <laughs> I don't think Eric Seidel wants to mention anything about yesterday's final table. Okay. <laughs> with the way that he ran at that final table, I think he wants to put it as far behind him as possible. Scott Graham says, hanging around, hanging around. Seidel has alligator blood. Jordan Taylor said, look at that control. He knows his man's going to bluff it. Oh, you know, remember that? Yes, I do. That's fantastic. Here's a look at event number six, 25K No Limit Hold'em events. Final table streaming tomorrow, also here on our YouTube channel. Jeremy Osmus, by the way. There he is. Did not get on a plane. Did not. He's playing again here in this 25K. Let's go. Nick Petrangelo was getting a massage there. I feel like he was asleep. I would love a massage right Head now. was right. fully down. And you have like probably three now, right? Okay. If you're just tuning in, Eric Seidel just doubled up on hand number one of heads-up play. He has 48 big blinds now. Anthony Hu has 68 big blinds. So we could be here for a while. Interesting match between two players who've been in this spot before many times. 330. Okay, it's the 330 total. Limp from Seidel, raised to 330 from Anthony Hu. Show Me Golden says, it's funny, Hu has been making baby bets on the rivers the whole time, and then he shoves at the worst possible time. Poker's a funny game. Seidel uh, doing some realigning there of the chips. 
some chip management. How do you stack them, Donnie? You're, you're a neat stacker. Yeah, I mean, 20 stacks if I have them. And I, I don't know, I've been on this kick for the last <coughs> couple of years where I don't have my stacks touch each other. Oh. I have them, like, you know, that's weird. Half a centimeter apart. What kind of disease is that that you do that? Is it, is it <laughs> me mental illness? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it must be. I have no idea why I do it, but that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And I can't stand people that don't stack their chips, like, oh, yeah. like neatly to some degree. I so you can just look at them and be like, okay, you have about this much. I agree. People that just have them all over the place are just driving me insane. Spirit says, who already shaking? It's over. I'm going to say who's not shaking just because the hand immediately after, he just <laughs> kept with his game. Yep. Seidel limps. He's got the 8-5 off. Okay, raise. Let's go. Like, I'm not going to slow down at all. So, Lots of speculative hands, of course, in the mix. During heads-up play, you guys all probably remember high-stakes duel, Jason Kuhn versus Phil Hellmuth. Lots of fun hands from that matchup. You can watch highlights of that match on our YouTube channel as well. Seidel here in the lead with King High. For you guys at home that love to you know, bet on sports or, or whatever else you like to bet on, what odds would you give Seidel right now in this moment to win this match? <laughs> Still an underdog, still got the shorter stack, but of course we know he has the experience. And Seidel right now calls this 100k bet with just King High right on the money again. Three of hearts on the river. King High is the best. Seidel once again checks. seconds for who is he going to bluff at it again 350 350 that's nearly pot size oh here we go Seidel with the lean in he doesn't trust this one bit going over the possible combinations that who could be bluffing with heart coming in on the river Sadell probably feel a lot better about this hand if his f king was a heart instead of the four. He would still have king high, but at least that heart would play into things a little more. Would be an epic call here if he decides to make it. Definitely not going to let this go too easily, and he has tons of time bank chips left, so he can really take his time here to try and figure who out. Ten seconds. Oh, he does lay it down. Eric Seidel so close. <laughs> Very nicely chosen bet sizing there from Anthony Hu. Look at the updated standings for the Poker Girl Cup. As we mentioned earlier, Aram Zobian is currently on top with 292 points, but we've yet to tally the points for Anthony Hu and Eric Seidel, so likely going to see a little shake up to the top spot of that leaderboard once this heads up match is complete. Seidel here, queen jack off, very good hand in heads up poker. Pocket threes for Mr. Anthony Hu. These are two strong heads up holdings. The big Broadway cards and the small pair. Definitely, a, I'm a bigger, bigger fan of the Broadway holdings in this case. Even bigger now when Queen 10 7 rolls off the deck. Very good flop for Seidel. People in the chat were doing predictions on the odds that Seidel would win. Some people even calling him a favorite right now. Well, as good as Seidel is, I don't think he can be a favorite. I think, I think given Luke, the stack size. I think Luke Wilson put a good number out there. He says Seidel plus 125. Yeah. And Anthony Hu probably one, minus 140, minus 145 in that neighborhood.
king on the turn. Tristram is asking, when is the next Poker Go live event on YouTube? That will be tomorrow at 1 p.m. Pacific time, 4 p.m. Eastern, 10 p.m. Central European time. The final table of the 25K No Limit that is ongoing right now in the background with the likes of uh, Jason Kuhn, Daniel Negreanu. And I'm pretty sure we're going to see Eric Seidel and Anthony who <laughs> jump into that <laughs> tournament as soon as this ends. Might even see him at the final table with the way these guys have been going. <laughs> Definitely. One Who trying to represent <laughs> Jack here? <laughs> when you're inside L's shoes here, what sort of sizings are you thinking of as far as the check race goes? Oh, he's. Race to five. He beat you to it, made it 500k. I don't think Seidel has to worry too much about Ace Jack in this spot. Just trying to get some value, but we know who has nothing. Nothing but a pair of threes. The closest we've been as far as the chip lead goes in this event, the difference between who and Seidel is just 12 big blinds right now. Seidel up 2.4 million since the start of play. Who up just under a million? really puts into perspective how big his chip lead was coming into this final table. Pocket it seven. It feels like we're watching a highlight reel. <laughs> These guys are both picking up big <laughs> hands. And who's been picking up big hands? It's all, all, all final table, all day. He's also been playing extra aggressive, but certainly has had his fair share of hands. Just about 3x here. Ooh, pocket tens for Eric Seidel, Remco. Wow. Here we go. Oh, boy. This could be very interesting if Seidel decides to three bet here. Yes, yeah, Seidel, 52 big blinds deep. The shorter of the two stacks, but not by much. Ten seconds. Probably too deep to just jam. And there's the three bet. Six sixty is the three bet from Seidel. Given Anthony whose tendencies and the way he's approached a lot of his situations, not out of the question to see him shove here. Sevens is so strong in heads up play. Who of course has Seidel covered by quite a margin still? Plays it conservatively, makes the call. Wow, we're going to see a flop here with already almost 1.4 million in the middle. Let's see if we can keep it low here for a big clash. Oh my oh God, no. 7 3 4. Seidel with the overpair. Top set for Anthony Hu. Disaster brewing for the Poker Hall of Famer. How can he get away from this, Donnie? I don't think he's going to be able to. They're not deep enough for him to get away from it. It's a great spot for him. In many, many cases, unfortunately, here he just gets outflopped by Anthony Hu. What an insane cooler during heads-up play. Eric Seidel hanging on the ropes, but he doesn't know it yet, Donnie. He probably thinks this is my chance to double up and put who on the ropes. Anthony who makes the call, plays it calm. Seidel still with two outs here. But it looks as though he's setting himself up for an all-in move. But the ace might save him, Donnie. What do you think? The ace might save him here. I was going to say, there's a lot of turn cards that could possibly slow Eric Seidel down. There's obviously a flush draw on the flop and Seidel does not have the ten of hearts in his hand. Check. Can be some straight cards that come on the, on the turn. Over cards as well. Here with the ace. I think who can certainly have aces in this spot. Who 
checks behind. Wow. Six, Six on, on the, river. the river. One card straight out there now, but the five, not really a card that we have to assign. Right, Donnie? I wouldn't assign it necessarily to Seidel. I would assign it more to Anthony Hu. Eric Seidel in a really, really tough decision. What started 900? out... Say 900. 900,000 is the bet from Seidel. Betting half his stack here versus Anthony Hu. Who's still sitting with a set of sevens. What is he going to do? Double checks his cards. Make sure they're still there. Ten seconds. I'm just counting down the seconds in my head until he announces the words all in. Because I can only imagine it is going to shove here. What a crazy hand. Anthony, who on the brink of winning this tournament. Well, there's still so much up in the air here right now. All in. He all does in. move all in. <sighs> Seidel hates it. Seidel. Understandably so. I'm dead, he said. Wow. 900K left with 5.3 million in the middle. I mean, the thing that might get Anthony Hu paid off, well, two things really that could get Anthony Hu paid off here. One, his play throughout the final table. Oh, he makes the call. It it's over. Eric Seidel has been eliminated. Pocket tense, no good against the set of Anthony Hu. We have a champion, ladies and gentlemen. Anthony Hu, congratulations. 268K for the winner. Eric Seidel, once again the runner-up. 176K goes his way. There it is. The Poker Hall of Famer exits the stage, probably on his way to play in event number six. But Anthony Hu is today's champion. The race for the cup is as hot as it can be with Anthony Hu up top, maybe playing a little bit of defense over the course of the next few events. But all these players you see on the screen are still in hot contention for the top spot. The big cup and, of course, that 50K cash prize bonus. This 50K No Limit Hold'em final table results page is brought to you by Hair Club. And as you can see, Osmus, Kim, Zobian, Di Stefano, and Eric Seidel all fell short in stopping Anthony Hu in winning this event. Anthony Hu, of course, all smiles as he takes down this event. It was once again a phenomenal final table. Thank you all so much for watching. We'll catch you tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern time for the final table of event number seven. Thank you so much. We'll catch you on the next one.